The story is about a disabled boy named Tae Sung. Tae Sung is suffering from lower body paralysis. The doctors are also unable to recover his legs. As days goes by, the legs of Tae Sung hurts more and more. The doctors are unable to find the reason, and so they increase the dosage of the medicines. Tae Sung doesn't care anymore as everything is over for him. But the only things that he has now are the pity glares of the people and the raising amount of hospital bills. Tae Sung used to be an ordinary human, but a car accident caused by drunk driving has taken everything from him. According to Tae Sung, the day when the accident occurred was a painfully ordinary day, and he was just stopping by the convenience store like usual to pick up a can of beer and some snacks to end the day. But one thing that was different about that day was that he was a bit unlucky. While he was standing on the pedestrian road, a truck comes and hits him, and this is how his ordinary life ends with a horrible pain. And he was left with illusionary pain in his legs, as if they were being cut off. He had no choice but to depend on drugs every night. There's a saying that God only gives trails that a person can handle. But now the trail that Tai Sung is facing is has gone beyond his capabilities, and he wished that he would die. As Tae Sung's body is paralyzed, so there is not much for him to do with this body. So most of the time he read novels. The novel that Tae Sung starts this week is The Magician Who Dominates the World. Whenever Tae Sung reads novels with happy ending, he felt happy too. It was comforting to read them when he was feeling depressed like today. He continued to read the novel and is about to end it by tonight. In this novel, a magician named Aiden destroyed everything in his path. In the end, he claimed victory and chose a new world creation. He ended the old world and recreated a new world to his taste. Everyone lost their memories and lived a happy life. Even those who experienced traumatic deaths and those he valued were there. This is how the novel ends. By reading this, Tae Sung gets frustrated and tells himself that why does he choose random novels to read, which also has a bad ending, by saying this, Tae Sung starts to cry and asks that why he cannot be happy. After a while, he clams himself and says that there is actually nothing to worry about a novel ending as even if he wake up tomorrow. Something like a happy ending will never be achievable for him. He then goes to sleep and when he wakes up, he saw a bright blue light. And after that, a message pops up which says that the magician who dominates the world is starting. By seeing this, Tae Sung gets scared and quickly gets up. As he gets up, he sees things that are unfamiliar for him, so he thinks that he is hallucinating. He then looks for his phone, but at the side of the bed, there was a bucket full of water. As he peeks on the bucket, his face gets reflected on the water surface. By seeing this, he gets surprised as the face was not his. He then gets that the full body is not his own, and he can move his legs. At that time, the blue panel again appears and says that this, the world of the magician who destroyed the world. And from now on, he must live as the character Mord Vernars. As Tai Sung reads the message, he gets that this is the novel that he has read last night, and the Mord character is an extra of the novel. After that, another message comes which says that if the character Mord dies, he will also die. Tae Sung thinks if all of this is real. So to test it out, get stands, and after that, he can feel all the structures under his feet. At that time, he feels a sharp headache and the blue panel appears and says that the contents of the novel will be registered in his brain. The memories of the character Mord and the language of this world will all be registered in his brain. After that, one by one, all the memories of Mord comes to his mind. He can see the life Mord has lived up until now, and also how his life ends. Mord Vernars is the son of the strange Archduke Vernars family. He's a bastard son of the Vernars family's patriarch, means he is an illegitimate son. Mord is someone who is so powerful that even if the protagonists were to gang up against him, it would not be guaranteed that they would win. But in the midst of a magic ritual to gain full control over his psyche, he was ambushed and killed by the protagonist and his group. In short, he is an extra, he only has a supporting role. But Taisung, who is in Mord's body, cannot understand that why he is born as Mord. At that time, the A message again appears on the panel, which says that if he change the fate of destruction, his wish will be granted. Taisung reads it and thinks that by the fate of destruction, it is probably referring to the novel's end.
He gets that he is here to protect this world from the protagonist who destroyed this world and creates a new one. Taisung then thinks for a bit that if he is dreaming or not as he was so tired on his half-paralyzed life, he hoped that if this is a dream, he would never awakes from it. Now Taisung didn't care if this is some god's prank or not, and as for the wish he wants his body from before the accident, he then thinks that he has all the information of this storyline, and he also has the power and talent of Mord, so he decides that he will change the fate of destruction and will claim his wish. After that, we can see the story of Mord, who is a part of the Archduke Vernar's family's bloodline, and is also a bastard son. Unaware of who his mother was, he had to live a difficult life. A few days after his birth, his mother died, and he was called the bastard who killed his own mother. He lived a life of the weak, unable to resist the harassment of others. It was not because he was weak, or because he did not know how to be angry. It was just that the guilt of being the bastard who killed his own mother was eating him alive. But Mord came to a turning point in his life. Those of the Vernar's bloodline awaken powers when they turn 15. They call it the new blood awakening. You have to endure pain comparable to your entire body burning in flames, but after that, you are gifted with strong powers. But for someone outside the Archduke family, the chances of surviving the new blood awakening is less that one in five. But Mord survives the new blood awakening and obtains strong powers. Mord's mother has kept a letter for him which says that if he survives his 15th birthday, he should head towards the Archduke Vernar's family. Mord listened to the last letter his mother left him and left to go to where the Archduke family resides. He goes there and agrees to take a test in order to be acknowledged by his father he had never even seen before. And as Mord is about to give the test, Taisung is reincarnated into his body. Mord is MWDW's extra, but Archduke Vernars is one of the main antagonists. Taesung has a lot of information on the Vernars family. The Archduke Vernars family already had plenty of children of the direct bloodline, so it was unlikely for Mord, a bastardized son, to be accepted. But having grown up without parents, Mord was full of desire to be acknowledged as the Archduke's son, and the Archduke was able to use that to his advantage to raise Mord to be his hunting dog. Having awakened the new blood power, Mord was so strong that even the protagonist would have struggled in a fight with him. Taesung can now feel that how strong Mord is, and as now he is in Mord's body, he wants to test this powers. While he was thinking all of this, a man comes and shouts that if he has forgotten about today. Taesung looks at the man, and from Mord's memory, he gets that this man is an instructor named Todd, and this person will be observing the test. He then goes towards the instructor and greets him. Mord has a much bulk body than the instructor. The instructor sees Mord and founds that he is a bit different today. He then says Mord that if he has already forgotten that he will be tested today. Mord asked what kind of test. The instructor replied that he will be tested to see how much potential he has. The instructor then also says to Mord that he thinks that he can fight well, as his body is so fit. By hearing this, Mord gets a bit nervous as he has to fight already. At the same time, he also gets happy as from now on he doesn't have to fight for his life. Mord also gets excited to try out his powers. After that, Mord starts to follow the instructor. And while going, the instructor tells Mord that he should never tell that he is the Archduke's son, Mord nods his head and says he understands. After a while, the both of them had reached the training ground where Mord will be tested. At the training ground, some men were already present there, and by seeing Instructor Todd, they greets him. Mord looks at them carefully, and by seeing how old they are, he thinks that they are warriors. Instructor Todd then tells Mord that if he is aware that the way a Vernar's fight is different from the way an ordinary warrior fights. Mord replies that, a real Vernars uses a weapon when untrained, but once trained, they do not depend on a weapon and fight with only the body they have. That's right. Of course, those who are not of Vernars' blood use weapons, but the others learn combat skills, Instructor Todd says. Mord already knows this. He then starts to think that the Archduke Vernars' family is the continent's best organization of warriors, and they made it to that position with just hand-to-hand -hand combat. So weapons are something they do not need. It might sound impossible, but there isn't a weapon in the world that can overpower the Werner's physique. 
While Mord is thinking all of this, Instructor Todd calls Warrior Vince to come forward. According to the instructor's orders, Vince comes forward and stands in front of Mord. The instructor then tells Mord that he will be fighting Vince. He also tells Mord to fight. Will all he had as the result of this fight will decide the future his. Vince then says to Mord that how the hell a 15-year boy like him has such a body, and also says that he wants to know that whose son he is. Mord then gathers all of this thoughts and stands in a fighting pose as the only way he can achieve his freedom is by showing his skills. After that, he rushed towards Vince and throws a uppercut. Vince gets surprised to see the fast movements of Mord. He dodges the attack by a split of seconds. Mord then thinks that he is more agile than he expected, and the boxing he learned as Tai Sung is helping him a lot. As Vince falls back to dodge the uppercut at that time, Mord launched a back kick, but Vince blocks it with his arms. Vince then asked Mord that why did he lied that he didn't learn how to fight. Mord replies that didn't lie to him and it is true that he didn't learn how to fight. Vince then gets mad and shouts that the posture of his is that of a learned person. Mord then says that he just copied it by seeing others. By hearing this, Vince gets silent, and without a single word, he rushed towards Mord with mana on his hand. By seeing this, a warrior tells Instructor Todd to stop Vince, as this might get dangerous to use mana against a kid who doesn't know any combat techniques. The instructor replied that they should let his go. On the other hand, Vince gets furious and is about to attack Mord. But as the attack is about to hit him, Mord dodges it quickly, A.E. and goes behind Vince. By seeing this, Vince gets shocked that how a newbie like him can see through his mana combat technique so quickly. As Vince turns towards Mord, he sees that Mord is using his technique. By seeing this, he gets scared and tries to block it with his arms, but it was of no use as Mord's punch pierced through Vince's defense and hits him abdomen. From the impact of the punch, Vince flies away and spits out blood from his mouth. By seeing this, the instructor and the other two warriors get shocked and thinks that Mord is an insane guy that he sent a warrior like Vince flying away. After that, Mord walks towards Vince and thinks that he has gone overboard, but the good thing is the he kinda gets how to use this power. While he is thinking, he sees that Vince moves his finger. As he sees this, he gets back and takes a fighting pose. Vince then stands up. Mord looks at Vince carefully and sees that he is not in a good condition. So Mord tells the instructor that they should stop here as he is unable to control his strength. And if the fight goes any further, he is afraid that he might kill Vince. Instructor Todd then goes into deep thinking and assess the situation. And after that, he tells them to stop. He then goes to Mord and asked him that why did he lied about that he didn't learn fighting? Mord replies that he said the truth. You want me to believe that when you even used mana? How can a person unlearned in mana combat technique know how to use mana? Todd said. Mord gets that Todd is doubting him. He then shows mana to Todd and asks him if this glowy thing is called mana. Mord also says that he was able to use it after a really high fever, but he don't know much about it. By hearing this, Todd tells Mord that if he thinks of him as a fool, that he would believe in such a stroy. Mord then tells Todd about the experience of the new blood awakening. But the real story is that Mord could actually use mana before the new blood awakening. That's how talented he is. God of combat, Vernars, goddess of the heavens, Arita. The blood of the two gods exist in Mord's body, creating an incredible synergy, making Mord a miraculous being. In other words, Mord was blessed with his genetics, as someone who was never officially trained until the age of 15, in just seven years he becomes stronger than Archduke Vernars, who is the strongest of the successors of the God of Combat. This is how the real Stroy of Mord went, as Mord tells Todd about his new blood awakening. Todd gets surprised and says that he is a monster. Todd then asked Mord that if he knew who Vince is. Mord replies that he didn't know him, and today is the first time he meet with him. Vince is a Verner's warrior who was trained from a young age and passed a strict test, Todd said. Todd then tells Mord his test result that he passed with 200 points out of 100. Mord then asked him that what was this test for. Todd says that this test was to determine that what level he is in. 
Todd further says that the Archduke Werner's family has a three-level curriculum for warriors, and if he fulfill the conditions at each level, he will be promoted to the next level, and if he pass the test at the last level, he will be then qualified to be an official warrior. Mord hears the words of the instructor carefully, and after thinking for a while, he tells the instructor to put him on the first level. By hearing this, the instructor gets shocked. Mord then tells him that he should go there to learn mana combat technique from the basics. The instructor understands Mord's planning and he tells Mord to get ready for tomorrow. After that takes his leave by saying he will send someone to guide him through the necessities on the first level tomorrow. Mord then goes to his room and lies on his bed. While laying, he thinks that if Mord has also went through this process, as there was nothing mentioned about him in the novel, and how he become the hidden card of the Archduke Vernars, Mord sits up and thinks that the only things that is mentioned in the novel is that the Archduke Vernars tried to mechanize Mord's potentials and dominated his mind to use him as a human weapon. Tai Sung, who is in Mord's body, thinks that in order to stop the destruction of this world, he has to stop the protagonist, Aiden. The one to complete the world fragments, which are like puzzle pieces containing the essence of this world, can be called the Supreme God, that is the magician who dominates the world. Just like the title, the great mage Aiden completes the world fragments and becomes a being who dominates the entire world and everything within it. And the result of that was the destruction of the world. As a god, Aiden did not just kill his enemies, he also killed his friends. The novel magician who dominates the world is about the fight between Aiden and his enemies to become the destructor of the world. Taesung thinks that no matter what he has to do anything to stop Aiden, as this might be his last opportunity and as from now on he will live like Mord instead of Taesung. The Archduke Vernars family is the ruler of a nation called the Principality of Vernars. The Vernars castle, which is at the heart of the nation, is as luxurious as other nations' royal castles. Its training facilities for the warriors is situated at the outskirts of the castle, the outer castle third region. In the early morning in a carriage, Mord is taken towards the training facility. As Mord has selected to training in the first level, so from now on he will also have to reside in the first level dormitory. As Mord sees the first level training facility, he gets amazed as it is even bigger than the most university campuses. Everything is going smoothly, but sudden the carriage shakes and a huge noise comes from the right side. The man that is escorting him tells that there is no need to worry, and as for the sound, it has come from the third level training ground. Mord gets a bit shocked to hear that such a noise comes from a training ground. He then thinks that it would be normal as the second-level trainees would easily surpass human limits, as there is a saying that Vernar's warriors are capable of merging the powers of multiple people into one. While thinking all of this, they have reached at first-level training ground. Mord then gets out of the carriage and thanks the man for escorting him. At the gate, the first-level instructor was present there, by seeing Mord, the instructor introduces him and tells Mord to call him Hayes from now on. Mord agrees to the instructor words. The instructor then asked him that if he has done bad on his test and if that's why he is here in the first level with a physique like that. Mord replied no and said that he has defeated Vince in the test. The instructor gets shocked and say that if he has defeated official warrior Vince, so why he is here in the first level. Mord then replies that he has never learned any mana combat technique, so he has come here to learn from the basics. The instructor then tells Mord to follow him. While walking inside, the instructor warns Mord to not disturb the trainees as they are practicing hardly. Mord agrees to him and think that even the level one trainees would be strong sign they are training to become Vernar's warriors. But Mord's imagination gets wrong when he meet the first level trainees. The trainees in the first level are all kids and also doesn't look strong. The instructor then introduces Mord to all the trainees. By seeing the level of the trainee, Mord regrets his decision of coming here, and he thinks that he should have gone to the third level. The instructor then looks at Mord and said that today he will be teaching him mana combat as he has never learnt before. He also says that it will be easy for him as he has already gone through the new blood awakening and he also possess mana. 
The instructor then begin to teach Mord. He tells Mord that, first, he have to detect ether and create mana, but as he has already done that, so next part is to collect mana, and the last steps are basic mana control and sense amplification. The APA. Last steps are basic mana control and sense amplification. Then Mord can move to the second level. Mord then asks that if he need to learn any combat skills. The instructor replies that if he wants to stay here longer, he can do that. Mord says that he didn't mean it that way. The instructor then says that he will show him some techniques and he can train on his own. And when he goes on the second level, the instructor there will fix things that are wrong. Mord thanks the instructor for this and begin his training. It's been 10 minutes he has been training, and he has already learnt the basics, and his mana gets stronger than the instructor's. By seeing this, the instructor tells Mord that he has graduated from his first level, and from tomorrow onwards, he can join the second level. The physical reinforcement lessons at the second level are split into two sub-levels. The first is hardening your body. This is to prevent any damage taken if you were to be hit by a carriage. The second is amplifying your physical abilities so that you can transcend. The second level. Physical reinforcement is a very difficult skill. So many trainees hit a wall here. But for Mord, it didn't take more than half an hour to master it. Mord passed the second level easy and now can move on to the third level. The second level instructor then tells Mord that it's easy up until the second level, but the third level will be difficult. As just like him, there are guys who are part of the bloodline in the third level, so graduating the third level will be challenging for Mord as he will be fighting against them without any battle skills. Mord also feels a bit nervous as he really doesn't know any mana combat techniques, and instructor Hayes also sent him to the second level thinking that he is hiding this true powers. The instructor then puts his hand on Mord's shoulder and said that it takes more than brute strength to graduate from the third level, and so he has to work harder. Mord already knows that the third level is on a different caliber, but at the same, he feels excited that he can meet with other Vernar's blood. On the other hand, we can see the new of Mord has spread like wildfire, and all the trainees are talking about him. The trainees are comparing Mord with Fion, who is a third-level trainee and is also a Vernar's bloodline. Fion hears this and decides to show Mord that there are ranks within the Vernar's bloodline. At that time, Mord has enters the training, and as soon as he enters, Fion goes to him and asked if he is the new guy. Mord didn't reply him and instead asked who he is. Fion replied that he is Class II's captain and he is also of the Vernar's bloodline like him. Mord then introduces himself and says that from now on he will also be part of the second class and he didn't know for how long he will be here. By hearing this, Fion gets angry and tells Mord that if he thinks of this place as a joke. Mord then says, don't be mistaken as if he thought that way, he would have never come to this place. As Fion is releasing his mana, Mord says, owe him to clam down as he is not in a good mood. As expected of a Vernars, I guess you can endure this much, Fion said to Mord. Mord then said to Fion that if he thinks that he would piss his pants or something if he tried to intimidate him with this type of stupid skill. By hearing this, Fion gets super angry and attacks Mord by saying that he will kill him. As Fion attacks, a huge explosion occurs by seeing this. The other trainees thinks that Mord is gone for good. But as the dust clears, the trainees set scared to see that Fion is on his knees and bleeding from his mouth. But on the other hand, Mord is standing completely fine. Mord then tells Fion that he thought he would be stronger, but now he sees that he is nothing but a village bully. Fion then gets up by whipping the blood on his mouth and says to Mord that he just got lucky with that punch. Mord replies that he was not lucky. Rather, it is because Fion is weak. After listening to this, Fion gets mad and rushed to attack Mord. Mord easily dodges the attack and then kicks Fion on the back so hard that he flies away and hits the wall. As Fion hits the wall, the wall cracks and he falls unconscious. By seeing this, Mord gets a bit shocked as he thought that a third-level Vernar's warrior would be much stronger. After that, a friend of Fion goes to him and wakes him up. As soon as he wakes up, he wants to fight with Mord. Mord said that he was out of ten seconds. Fion shouts at Mord that he managed to attack him when he let his guard down. Mord then tells that he is pathetic as he let his guard down in a fight. 
By hearing this, Fion starts to shake out of anger and the mana that he is radiating gets more intense. Fion has now awakened his new blood power. The trainees get scared to see this and starts to run away from Fion and goes to call the instructor. The trainees also tells Mord to run away as he might gets killed. But Mord didn't run away and became to analysis Fion's powers. At that time, the third level instructor, Daisley, come and ask the trainees about what is going on. One of the trainees tells the instructor that the new guy, Mord and Fion, are fighting. The instructor then looks at them, and as he says nothing, a trainee asked if they should stop them. The instructor replies that he will keep watching for now, as Fion's strength is comparable to a normal warrior, an instructor thinks that it would be a nice chance to test his skills, and as for the new guy, it would not be a much of an issue if he gets killed. On the other side, Fion gets ready and jumps to attack Mord. By seeing the attack, Mord recognizes it as an advanced skill that uses the body or a weapon as a vessel to create a stronger energy form called a impulse. Fion attacks Mord with the body impulse, but at the right time, Mord dodged it, and the attack lands on the ground and shatters it. After seeing the impact of the attack, Mord thinks that he would be a goner if the attack had land on him. While he is thinking, this Fion gets in front of him in a lightning speed and throws a punch on him. But Mord sees the punch coming, so he quickly dodged it and throws a jab on Fion's face. The punch hits the nose of Fion, and he starts to bleed. After that, Fion attacks Mord a few more times, but all the time his attacks gets blocked by Mord, and instead he received hits from Mord. By seeing this, the other trainees get shocked as a newbie like him is overpowering Fion. The instructor also sees that the impulse of Fion is getting weaker. While Fion was catching his breath at that time, Mord rushed at him and lands a clear punch on Fion's stomach. Fion then flies away and hold his stomach to out of pain. Fion then tells Mord to stop running like a coward and take his attacks head on. Mord then makes an annoyed face and tells Fion to come at him as he will not be dodging from now on. Fion gets happy by hearing this and rush towards Mord without thinking anything. He then throws a punch at Mord. By Mord stops the punch with his hand. After stopping it, he tells Fion that impulse doesn't do much if he is much weaker than his opponent. Mord starts to release his mana and condensed it around his hand. Fion gets scared to see that he who is a mana user is getting crushed by a non-mana user newbie. Mord then punched Fion, and he flies away and gets knocked out by hitting a wall. The instructor gets confused to see Fion defeated. He has never seen a monster like Mord who has defeated Fion without using impulse. In his whole life he has trained countless talented Vernars, but he has never seen someone this talented like Mord Mord then turns around to all of the trainees and asked if anyone is willing to fight him now. All the other trainees stood silent. The instructor starts to walk away and tells the other trainees to take Fion to the medical center. As he is going, he thinks that if he leaves Mord like this, the order of this place will start to crumble, and as he can't let this happen, he wants to tame Mord as he is bastard who has no family support behind him. As Fion gets heavily injured, he get into coma and is now at the medical center. For this reason, Mord is put on a four days probation. In this four day, Mord was not allowed to train, so he reads tactics theory books, and he finds the tactics books are much easier as he has already studied up to grad school. While staying in the doom, sitting and reading all day, he gets bored, and so he decides to do some mana combat training at that time first level. Instructor Todd comes to him by hearing that he had done something in the third level training ground. Mord then greets him and asks that why he has come to him. Todd reply that he has come here to tell him that the Archduke is looking for him. Mord gets a bit shocked and asks that why the Archduke is looking for him. Todd replied that he will get to know when he goes there. Mord then asks that if he will be going like this. Todd then says that the Archduke wouldn't expect him to know the etiquettes of aristocracy, so as long as he is well-mannered, it will be fine. After that, the two of them gets into a carriage. While sitting in the carriage, Todd says that the name of Mord is everyone because of the things he has done in first and second training grounds. Todd then says to Mord that he is very clever. Mord says that what he means by that Todd replies that he means that all the things he has done is to attract the Archduke's eyes. Mord then said that if he wants to grab the attention of the Archduke, 
wouldn't he just become a very powerful warrior? Todd also thinks about it and gets that Mord is saying the truth. He then tells Mord that the Archduke took interest in him by seeing the yesterday's report. While talking, the both of them has reached the place where the Archduke is training. The two of them gets out of the carriage and walks inside the training ground. As Mord gets in, he see that the Archduke is fighting with many warriors. While Mord is standing there, he feels immense aura coming from the Archduke Werners, and he looks like a muscular gaint. The Archduke is standing still in the middle of the training ground, and he is being attacked by the warriors around him. But the attacks of the warriors didn't reach him as he has created a purple aura shield around him. After countless attack from the warriors, the shield begins to crack. The Archduke then tells them to back off. As soon as the warriors gets back, the Archduke take all the aura into his hand and begins to put more aura. The small purple ball turns into a giant one. And after that, he launched the attack, and a huge purple-red beam comes out of the ball and shatters the wall. By seeing the skill, Mord recognizes it as an overpowered skill that absorbs both magical and physical attacks and turns it into a shockwave that can be thrown back at the opponent. The skill's name is God of Combat's Mirror. According to the novel storyline, this skill is in its development stage. Mord gets impressed to see that an incomplete skill can cause such level of destruction. The Archduke then turns towards Mord and Todd. The two of them then bows down and greets him. The Archduke then walks towards Mord and stops in front of him and says that he has heard that he has done something interesting in the training facility. As the Archduke stands in front of him, Mord feels intimidate. As Mord stands still, the Archduke touches his face and asks that who is his mother. Mord reply that Reyna was his mother. By hearing this, Archduke says he remembers her and the face of Mord also resemble her more. He then asks Mord if he has gone through new blood awakening this year. Mord replies yes. The Archduke then says that he has heard that Mord has defeated an impulse user with just body reinforcement and so now he wants to see how strong he is. After saying this, he calls his subordinate Kessner. After that, a yellow-haired man comes and kneels down in front of the Archduke. The Archduke then tells him that he will now spar with Mord Kessner, gets a bit shocked that he has to fight with a kid. The Archduke says that he is his son, who got here a few days ago from the outside, and so he just want to see how strong he is. He also tells Kessner not to go too hard on him. Kessner replied that he understands, and he then tells Mord to get on the sparring field. As the two of them gets on the field, Kessner tells Mord that he can choose any weapon. Mord replied that he doesn't need a weapon as he has never learnt how to wield a weapon, so he will be fighting bare fist. After that, Kessner rushed towards Mord and throws a punch at him. Mord dodged it, but he gets that Kessner is very fast as he is close subordinate of the Archduke. As Moore dodged it, Kessner praises him for dodging it without using mana. Kessner the begins his attack. The movement of Kessner is so fast that Mord is unable to dodge it, and he is being pushed back. Kessner then gets a bit mad, as Mord is not giving his all even though he is facing him. Kessner then begins to release his mana and says that he won't be going easy on him anymore. Mord feels the mana of Kessner and thinks that he is of the Vernar's bloodline as Kessner is a close personnel of the Archduke, so he must be super strong, so Mord think that now he can use his full powers. Mord then starts to release his mana. Both of their mana clashes with each other, and none is overpowering the other. The Archduke gets impressed to see this. Kessner also gets shocked to see that a newbie's mana is equal to his. Sung feels that Mord has never maximum his potential because of the insults he used to receive from the people. But from now on, Taesung, who is in Mord's body, will level up the potential of Mord. After that, he tells Kessner to come at him. By seeing this, Kessner rushed towards him in a zigzag movements and throws a punch at him. Mord blocks the punch with both of his arms. Kessner then says that he understands why the Archduke is interested in him and the rumors about him are all true. He also says that blocking the punch is useless. As he says this, the strength of the punch doubles, and it pierced through the defense of Mord and hits his stomach. Getting hit by the punch, Mord flies away and lands after a few meters. He gets confused to see that the strength of the punch gets doubled. As he gets up at that moment, Kessner comes in front of his face and again punched him on the stomach, saying that he has a lot more to learn.
Mord then flies away and hit the wall hard. By seeing this, Kessner says not to disappoint him as he hasn't started yet. Kessner then walked towards Mord and says to him that he is quite disappointed by witnessing Mord's strength. Mord perceives that the difference between their strength is quite large and worries if he really needs to rely on his new blood power to defeat Kessner. But Mord realizes that if he uses his new blood power, the opponent will also use his blood power, which would be quite the headache for Mord. Kessner speaks that Mord is thinking too much and says that if doesn't want to fight, he will force Mord to fight. Kessner charges straight at Mord. Mord punches Kessner, but Kessner dodges it. Mord's punch creates a huge impact on the ground. Mord plans that he would not show his true strength to Kessner, but it's really annoying to get hit by him, so Mord thinks he would at least get one attack in. Mord punches and Kessner dodges it. Kessner says to Mord that Aya's moves are sloppy. He is talented, but his combat abilities are still on a novice level. Kessner creates a fire aura in his right hand and punches Mord. Kessner reminds Mord that he told him it's useless to block this attack of his. Mord smirks and blocks Kessner's attack and at the same time attacks his opponent. Kessner gets astounded as he witnesses his own power, the double attack being used by Mord and perfectly. Kessner assumes that Mord offset his double attack and block it on purpose to copy his attack. Kessner gets furious as Mord was able to successfully copy Kessner's attack this quickly. Kessner says that the situation is getting more and more interesting and wants Mord to use this full power against him. Kessner creates a flame aura emanating from his right hand, while Mord thinks that Kessner is now using his impulse and the battle will get rigid from now on. On the next moment, Archduke declares that the match has ended and orders Kessner to back off. Archduke compliments Mord for his astounding performance despite being a newly blood user. Archduke comes closer to Mord and tells Mord that he needs to check something. He accumulates his impules and releases his impulse ball at Mord. Mord gets angry while thinking that his current body can't take this much of an impact and wonders whether he would use his blood power or not. Mord suddenly reminiscent his fight with Fionn. He realizes that the fight he had with Fionn was indeed helpful even though Fionn was weaker than him. He conceives that it's impossible to defelct an impulses with the beginner level body reinforces, but what will happen if he uses an impule to counterattack an impulse? The answer was sure to Mord that if he does that, he would be able to withstand this attack. Instructor Todd gets surprised while watching Mord's evolution to this extent. He wonders that how can a novice use an impulse? The MC thinks that Mord's powers are beyond of what he imagined because this body can copy a skill just by looking once. The Archduke again praises Mord for his accomplishments. He says it was expected as Mord is someone from his bloodline. Mord thinks in his mind that the Archduke is a greedy person who only cares for the useful ones. He also thinks that someday he would punch him right in the face. The Archduke then says that he would reward Mord for his performance today. He says that he can give Mord the money which nobody could even dream of or a great mentor to train him. He adds that Mord just need to say it, and he would prepare it from Mord. Mord thinks that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity as he already decided what he would ask for. Mord plans that he needs to collect the world fragments before Aiden does. This is something he needs to do in order to stop Aiden from destroying this world. Mord tells the Archduke that he doesn't want something like that, but he has one particular desire, which is to challenge the god of combat's grave. Mord explains that there are places called dungeons in the novel Mwau. Like all dungeons in fantasy realms, they're dangerous places full of monsters. But this world's dungeons are a bit different from the dungeons of other fantasy realms because they are symptoms of the other world's erosion. He conceives that, in other words, dungeons form in places where this world and another overlap and abnormal things happen inside. Most dungeons are overlapped with the demon realm, and this world's monsters are mostly from dungeons. However, the god of combat's grave, where the god of combat, Vernars, was said to have been created, has nothing to do with overlapping with another world. Mord concludes that he is where he would get the world fragment. Archduke questions Mord to know the reason from him to challenge to god of combat's grave. Mord answers that he heard that's where the traces of the god of combat, Vernars, are left behind. He wanted to see if for himself the root of his bloodline that he felt when he awakened.
Kessner thinks that Mord is being immature for his age. Kessner concludes that the God of Combat's grave is where the coming-of-age ceremony for the direct bloodlines is held, and Mord's request is like a direct challenge to the direct bloodline. The Archduke agrees to Mord's request. The Archduke looks at Kessner and asks him whether he wants to go with Mord. The Archduke conceives that Kessner definitely wants to go. He has lived an inferior existence just because he was born a bastard. Archduke is certain that he wants to taste the privilege of the direct bloodlines. Archduke says to Mord that it's too early for him and he can't send someone unqualified, so Mord can only challenge the combat's grave when he is a full-fledged official warrior. Mord thinks that becoming a warrior will not be difficult for him, but he needs to be faster than the main protagonist of the novel. Mord answers that he understands and he will abide by the rules. After that Mord and the level one instructor Todd leaves the training ground, the Archduke then asked Kessner that what he thinks about Mord after fighting with him. Kessen replies that he feels that Mord is hiding a lot, and he is certain that when he was fighting with him, he didn't give his all. The Archduke then says that he gave his all when he was blocking the impulse ball, and at that time he also learnt body impulse. Kessner then says that he knew that some people are capable of learning this on the spot. But what he find most surprising is Mord's mana. He also says that Mord didn't know how to control his power yet, but the level of his mana is incredible. Archduke then says that Mord's mana is comparable to Erna's. After that, he was about to say something, but he stops. So Kessner asked him that what he was about to say. Archduke replied that it's nothing. He then thinks in this mind that the eyes of Mord is weirdly void of desire, which he finds a bit unusual, as all the eyes of his bastard sons that he has seen were full of desire to get validation from him. Archduke smiles as he finds Mord interesting as he has taken after his mother Reyna. After that, we can see Mord has reached the training ground of the third level. As he enter the training ground, he sees the trainees are sparring with each other. By seeing this, he feels happy, as from now on, he will be able to learn something. While he is watching the spar, he heard two trainees talking. The trainees were saying that, for the god of combat's grave, the family is going to choose five people out of the Vernar's bastard children. And as there's Sir Kessner and the Viscount Owen, so basically there are three spots left. The trainee also further says that it's an expedition to figure out a pattern analysis of the god of combat's grave, right? Since its pattern changes once it's cleared instead of disappearing. Though it probably lessens the risk for those of the direct bloodline, the other trainee said. By hearing this more this that he has to hurry up and become a warrior quickly, as even Kessner is about to challenge the god of combat grave. After that, Instructor Daisley comes and tells everyone to prepare for the usual training. All the trainees then run towards the training ground. Instructor. Daisley stops Mord and goes near him. He then tells Mord that he cannot participate in this lesson as he is a newcomer. He further says Mord that he should latter ask other trainees to help him catch up the lesson. Mord gets a bit confused and said, as he is not going to teach him, he should at least tell him that which trainee would be a good choice for him to seek help from. The instructor makes an angry face and says that he is a thick-skinned, that he is making demands from him, even after injuring the captain. Mord replies that he was punished accordingly for that, and also it was clearly the captain's fault. The instructor then shouts at him and says that he has no manners of speaking with an adult. Mord, that said him to get it right as he is not talking back. And it's a reasonable request, and it's his duty as the instructor. By listening to this, the instructor gets angry and kicks Mord, and then quickly grabs his collar and orders him run laps around the training ground until Toadie's training session is over. The instructor also says that he will have to run at a constant speed while listening all the lessons. And after the session, he will ask him questions, and if he fails to answer correctly, he will be punished. Mord gets furious and gathers mana in his hand. The instructor sees that Mord is extruding mana. He thinks that his authority is being challenged, so he again punched him on the face and shouts that how dare he is to bare teeth in front of the instructor. Getting hit from the punch, Mord was forced to fall back. The instructor walks towards him and says that the authority of the instructor is absolute here, and he will kick him out of this place if he resists. Mord then wipes the blood coming from his mouth and thinks if he should punch the instructor. 
He then stops by thinking that if he caused conflicts here, it might interfere with his test of becoming a warrior. So Mord decides you'll hold in as he need to go to the God of Combat's grave. Mord then agrees to the instructor's orders. By hearing this, the instructor tells to start running. Mord makes an annoyed face and starts to run. As Mord is running, the instructor looks at and thinks to make him pay for disrespecting him. After that, Daisley seemed to hold a grudge and kept punishing Mord for every petty little thing. Daisley was crazed with the authority he had. If he thinks his authority was being challenged even a little, he punishes them verbally and physically without mercy. But he called the punishments training so no one was able to resist. And this was how Daisley ruled over this place. After Mord finished running, Daisley again punished him for not running at a constant speed. He make Mord stand on one hand and asked him why he is disobeying his instructor's words. Mord did reply anything as he was thinking that why the instructor is so insistent on abusing him. He then that the reason for this could be because he extruded mana in front of all the trainees. As Mord didn't says anything, the instructor takes his leave by saying him to stay in that pose for the whole day, and if he even moves one inch, he will again punish him. As the instructor leaves, Mord thinks that the reason he held his anger in is because he thought the instructor has something valuable to teach him, but now it seems like it's about time he should get some real training. On the other hand, we can see the instructor is sitting in his room and is still angry on Mord. He also thinks that the punishments he gave him would have destroyed anyone's body, but he endures until the end as if to rebel. The instructor also thinks that how did some bastard child without any real blood or training become such a monster? While thinking this, the instructor gets angry and punched the wall and starts to think of a way to break Mord. Then in the next day, we can see Mord has come to the training ground, and he tells the instructor in front of all the trainees that he wants to take the test to become a warrior. Everyone along with the instructor gets shocked, and the instructor asked Mord if he is in his right mind. Mord reply that he says it in his right mind. The instructor then tells that he is ridiculous as he didn't even learn everything he needs to become a warrior. That's because somebody neglected their duty as an instructor. And now that I think about it, that somebody isn't qualified to teach, Mord says to the instructor, the instructor gets mad and shouts at Mord that what the bullshit he is spouting, and he is the one to decide who is fit to take the test to become a warrior. He also further says that he will never allow him to take the test. Mord then says to Instructor Daisley that he doesn't have the right to say that. He also says that he official challenged Daisley to a god of combat spirit. Daisley gets super shocked to hear this. God of combat spirit, it refers to the sacred practice of duels. Like all those who respect power, they also had a barbaric tradition that he who is strong is right. The god of combat gifts, a real warrior his blessing. Therefore, if you engage in God of Combat spirit to choose who is right or wrong, the winner is the one in the right. Instructor. Daisley asked Mord is a nervous voice that who he knows about it. Mord then replies that doesn't matter, as according to Vernar's laws, as a trainee he can request a God of Combat spirit from the instructor, and now he will use that privilege to prove that he is not qualified to be his instructor. According to the legends The God of Combat, Vernars grew up unaware of his real identity. When he was younger, he was harassed by those drunk in power who claimed to be his instructor. Therefore, Vernars said to his descendants that those who dictate over others without the ability to prove their qualifications deserve to die. And for that reason, the Vernars law permits trainees to request God of Combat spirit from their instructors, Mord then thinks that the god of combat was not in his rightful mind when he says this, but anyways, it is now beneficial for him. The instructor gets angry to hear this, and then he grabs Mord's collar and says that he is at least ten years too young to even talk about such a great ritual. Don't be mistaken, Daisley. You don't have the right to deny a god of combat spirit, Mord said by removing Daisley's hand from his shirt. Mord then walks at the middle of the ground and shouts with mana that... Trainee Mord requests a god of combat spirit from the level three instructor Dalesy, he shouts thrice. After shouting, he turns at Daisley and tells him to choose whether he will accept or deny the request. He also says that if he plans on denying it, 
he will go out and tell everyone the truth. Instructor gets angry and threatens Mord that he cannot get away from him with acting like that. Mord then releases him mana and warns Daisley that this is his last chance as he doesn't want to waste any more time on trash like him. From the pressure of Mord's mana, Daisley feels a bit uncomfortable and thinks that his mana is incredible and he has more power than when he was fighting with Fion. Daisley feels a bit nervous, but as he cannot back off from this, he accepted the challenge. And as he is about to tell the duel time, Mord stops him and said that the duel will held in one hour in this ground. Daisley asked that why he is choosing the time. Mord replied that the challenger is allowed to choose the time and place, and as he said before, he doesn't want to waste no more time on him. Mord then walks away by saying that he will not stop him if he runs away. Then at Sir Kestner's office, he has also heard Mord shouting about the duel. He laughs at this, thinking that Mord is not an ordinary guy, and he never fails to entertain him. He then tells his servant to get ready as they are leaving for the level three training facility right away. After one hour, we can see Mord has come to the training ground and is not taking this seriously on the other hand. Daisley has come fully prepared. He has worn a full set armor and takes a sword and a shield on his hand. Mord walks towards Daisley and mocks him by saying that he didn't run away. Daisley says that he will make his regret his arrogance. While the two of them is arguing with each other at that time, Kessner arrives. By seeing Kessner, Mord asked him that why is he here and then goes to him. By seeing Kessner and Mord talking to each other, Daisley thinks that he is behind the arrogant behavior of Mord. Kessner then replies to Mord that he has heard something interesting is happening here, so he comes here to see it. He then asked Mord that what was he think to challenge a instructor for a god of combat spirit? Mord reply that he has no other choice as the instructor neglects his duty and has rotten thoughts in his mind. Hearing this, Kessner laughs and asked Mord if he is confident that he can win. He also tells him that Daisley may be a retired warrior, but he is not someone who can be underestimated. Mord thanks him for showing concern for him and tells that he will win. By hearing this, this Daisley tells that he wants to punch Mord right now, but he has to wait as he has called for another instructor to be the witness. If the instructor's not here yet, may I take over the role of being the witness, Kessner said. Hearing Sir Kessner words, instructor Daisley gets shocked and asked him that what he means. Kessner replied that he will be the witness of the god of combat spirit. He also asked Daisley if he thinks that he is not qualified for this. Daisley gets scared and says that he doesn't mean that he just said that as Sir Kessner is a very busy person. Kessner gives an angry look and asks Daisley if he is talking down on him. He also says that just because he respected him as an instructor, is he saying that he is equal to him, the Viscount of Windsor? Daisley lowers his head and apologizes to him. Mord then interrupts them and says that it is time for the duel. Kessner then walks away, form the ground, and says to Mord that he is looking forward to this fight, and also says that he hopes he didn't come all the way here for nothing. Mord looks at Dalesy and tells that now they should begin the fight. Dalesy also agrees to him. Dalesy then says to Mord that he will regret if he only has body reinforcement that he used to beat Fion's impulse body. After that, Daisley begins to release his mana and wraps his sword with it and tells Mord that if he can handle his sword impulse. Mord looks and says how funny it is that he thought he would go all out in a fight with a trainee. By saying this, Mord also releases his mana and uses the body impulse technique. Daisley gets shocked to see Mord using body impulse and thinks when did he learnt it. Mord then rushed towards Daisley by seeing this. Dalesy swings his sword, but Mord stops it with his body impulse. After a while, Mord's body impulse pierce through Daisley's sword impulse and force him to fall back. Daisley gets confused to see that Mord has pierced through his attack and sent him flying. Mord the approaches, Daisley, and throws a punch at him, but Daisley blocks it with his shield. He then says to Mord that he agrees that Mord is fit to be a warrior, but he still cannot beat him. By saying this, Daisley pushed back Mord using his shield. As Mord gets pushed back, Daisley attacks him with his sword. Mord dodged the attack, but he cannot dodge it fully and cuts his face. Daisley then says to Mord that how dare he is to request a god of combat spirit with the opponent like him who has survived countless battlefields and near-death situations. 
By saying this, he, aging, charged at Mord, but Mord jumps to avoid his sword. Mord then moves backwards to create some space between them. He also feels that he is a bit lacking in experience and skills. Kessner, who is watching the match, also gets that Mord is talented, but his fighting style is of the beginners. And the experience is also something that cannot be ignored. And if he loses this match, he has to leave this place as Dalesy will make sure of it. As Mord is standing silently, Daisley asked him what's wrong, and if has finally nothing to say. You're expired trash, but your skills aren't bad, Mord said. Dalesy then says that his arrogance is astounding, and he bet it's because he can't handle this situation without pretending to be strong. Do you really think so? You're really cementing yourself as the unqualifies instructor, Mord said. Daisley then tells that he will train him right here and now. That an impossible wish, Mord says this, and after that he began to release enormous amount of mana that begins to affect Daisley. While releasing this amount of mana, Mord's hair has turned silver. By seeing this, Daisley recognize it as the new blood awakening. Mord then opens his eyes, and his eyes also has turned silver. He then begins to walk towards Daisley and says not to resent him if he ends up killing him, as he is fighting in this form for the first time, and he doesn't know how to hold back his powers. In the case of the Vernus bloodline, after going through divine blood awakening at the age of 15. From now on, we will be calling new blood as divine blood. After awakening the divine blood at 15, they are able to use the divine blood powers. However, most of them stop at using divine blood powers to increase their mana pool. While that allows them to gain incredible power, if someone were able to control divine blood in its entirety, they could gain immense power comparable to none. Kessner gets shocked to see this, that a 15-year outsider managed to awaken his divine blood power. Even though Kessner was considered to be the most talented amongst the children, it took him four years to awaken my divine powers, and yet despite only being here for eight days, Mord has already reached that state. Daisley cannot believe his eyes, but the silver eyes and hair are the proof of awakening divine blood power. Mord advised Daisley to quit now, as if he quits now, the only thing he will be losing is pride. Don't make me laugh! Even if you can use divine blood powers, there's no way I would lose to a beginner like you, Daisley said. Hearing this, Mord rushed towards Daisley and starts to gather mana on his right hand. Daisley says that his attack will have no effect, and also he will not fall for the same trick twice. After that, Daisley puts his shield in front of him. Mord didn't says anything and swings his right hand vertically getting hit, but Mord's hand. Daisley flies away and falls on the ground. Mord gets impressed to see that the power of divine blood is so strong. Daisley also gets scared and thinks that he will lose to this 15-year-old boy. He then gets up and feels that his left shoulder is broken and he cannot use his left arm. He then uses sword impulse and rushed towards Mord. Seeing this, Mord also rushed towards him. But Daisley used some movement technique and gets behind Mord and swings his sword. The sword hits Mord and a huge explosion occurs. Kessner praises Daisley for using the chance when Mord let his guard down. But however, the strongest weapon and defense of the Vernars family is their physical bodies. And for a sword impulse that relies on weapons, it would be a mere tickle for those who have awakened their divine blood. The sword hits Mord, but it didn't even do a single damage to him. Mord turns to Daisley and says he has no right to be an instructor. Daisley gets broken to see that the sword impulse that he trained on the battlefield for decades has no effects on Mord. Daisley then starts to swing his sword madly at Mord, but the slashes of the sword has no effects on Mord. Mord then gets closer to Daisley and says he is disappointed in him that despite being this weak, he still acted all high and mighty. Daisley gets furious and says Mord that who is he to talk to him like that? By saying this, Daisley swings his sword hard. But Mord catches the sword with his hand and asked Daisley that if he really thinks an attack like this will work against him. As a being of the bloodline of the god of combat, he fight with his bare hands because there is no weapon that is stronger than his own physical bodies. Mord then inserts mana into Daisley's sword, and the mana also gets inside Daisley. He then starts to scream out of extreme pain and also starts to spit blood out of his mouth. He then begs Mord to stop. After that, Mord releases the sword and Daisley fell on his knees. Mord then tell Daisley to accept his defeat and he will let him live. But if he refuses his loss, then he will really kill him now.
Daisley feels the huge power gap between them and thinks he can never win against him, so he lowers his head and accepted his defeat. By seeing this, the trainees gets excited and shouts out that Mord has defeated the instructor. Kessner looks forward to see how strong Mord gets, because as a bastard of Vernars, he has awakened his divine blood after eight days of joining the Vernars family. And not only that, he managed to kill his instructor's will with the god of combat spirit. Kessner then smiles and leaves the training facility. The trainees are all cheering for Mord, and we can see a girl who has watched the fight thinks that Mord is pretty amazing, and she never expected to see such monster like him here. The girl's name is Erna Vernars, and she is the seventh traditional bloodlines of Vernar. Then, in the castle of Archduke Vernars, we can see Mord is standing in front of the Archduke. The Archduke then says to him that he heard that he has officially become a warrior, and he has also easily passed the god of combat spirit. Mord bows down and says that all the things that he has heard is true, and now he has come here to claim his reward. The Archduke says that he is pretty ballsy, and also asked him if he has requested the god of combat spirit just to become a warrior. Mord replied that he couldn't continue to watch the instructor give up on his duties. The Archduke gets up from the throne, and as he climbs down the stairs, he says that he has no issue with his action, as the strong one are those who are right, is the mentality of the Vernars. He then comes face to face with Mord, and by exuding his mana, he asked Mord that why did he hide his strength from him in the past? Mord replies that he was merely being more careful with the utilization of mana when he was using the impulse, and it was the first time he had used it. The Archduke gets that it is a clear lie, but he decides to let it go and smiles. He then says Mord that if his decision to enter the god of combat's grave is still the same, Mord replies it is the same. By hearing this, a subordinate of Archduke requests him to rethink his decision as allowing Mord to challenge the god of combat's grave before the officially announced warriors will arise many complaints. Hearing this, the Archduke gives and deadly look and tells that how dare he is to tell him to rethink about his decision. The subordinate gets scared and lowers his head and asks for the Archduke forgiveness. The Archduke says that a promise is a promise and he will allow Mord to challenge the god of combat's grave. Also, despite not knowing that Mord wishes to gain for this, he allows Mord to go there. Mord kneels down and thanks the Archduke for allowing him. He also smiles as he finally gets the chance to collect his first world fragment. After that, Kessner takes Mord to the entrance of the god of combat's grave. Esner then tells Mord that only one person can enter at a time, and no matter what dangers he face, unless he dies, no one else may enter. Mord knew that the entrance of the God of Combat's grave is in the basement of the Archduke's basement, but he didn't, accept it to be this big. Kessner then says that he didn't thought Mord will get to challenge it before him. Mord agrees with him, and says that he has never thought that he will get his chance so early. Hearing this, Kessner tells Mord not be to sue surprised as it is the result of his hard training and also wishes that he returns back unharmed. Mord starts to walk towards the entrance by saying thanks to Kessner for showing concern about him. As he stands close to the gate, he feels a bit odd from the aura coming from the gate. According to the founding myth of the Vernars Duchy, the god of combat, Vernars has never faced death. He fulfilled his destiny as a human and only left this world to become a god in the heavens. The name God of Combat's Grave is merely a name that Vernars made. It has a different meaning. The human side of the God of Combat Vernars, the place where the remnants lie. While thinking this Mord puts his hand on the gate and the gate opens and bright white light comes from the inside. Mord then starts to walk inside the gate while he is entering. He thinks that as described in the novel, Seven years from now, Aiden manages to find a world fragment inside the God of Combat's grave. He get that with the help of an aid. But however, the world fragment should still exist here at this point in time, thinking this Mord gets inside and the gate closes. Getting inside of the God of Combat's grave. Mord gets shocked as this is completely different from the grave that was described in the novel. There are six different layouts within the God of Combat's grave. However, the pattern that appeared in the novel, it was merely one of six, 
Mord then thinks that no matter what layout it may be, they all have a seal, and all he need to do is find that seal. The seal is supposed to be a stone statue that represents the life of the god of combat. Mord starts to roam around to find the statues. As he is roaming around, he noticed some noise coming from his behind, so he turns around and sees that hellhounds are tailing him. He gets surrounded by the two hellhounds, and the hellhounds rushed towards him. As one of the hellhounds is about to land and attack, Mord uses him fist and punched the hellhound's head and shatters it. He then throws an aura punch at the other hellhound and also kills it by piercing its body. He then starts his search of finding the seal. After roaming for a while, he comes in front of a huge two-headed ogre statue. By seeing this, he gets that it is the first seal, and this is the monster that god of combat Vernars kill when he was young. Mord then looks carefully and sees the statue of Vernars on the top of the ogre. As the statue is in a pretty high place, Mord uses his mana and jumps on the shoulder of the ogre. By seeing the statue of Vernars from close, he thinks that this statue is when Vernars was ten years old. Seeing this, he also understands that why the descendants of Vernars are so big. Mord then activates his divine blood power and cuts his wrist and drops a few drop of blood on the statue's head. After doing this, Mord thinks that it would have been very hard for him to find it if he didn't have a clue beforehand. He also thinks that the method of unsealing is very weird as... After awakening divine blood, who would think to drop blood on the head of the god of combat statue? After that, Mord jumps of the statue and gets happy, as he is the first to claim it. He then starts to move on towards the next seal. As Mord is leaving, the statue's head starts to crack and its eyes looks at Mord. As Mord walks, he fights with various types of monster. He fights with a huge green snake, few dozens of hellhounds, and with skeleton warrior. One kick from him is enough to kill the skeleton warrior. Mord has come deeper, and the monsters are coming at him continuously. Mord again comes face to face with a green snake, and now he cannot even dodge the attacks as he is in a narrow alley. As the snakes launched its attack, Mord concentrates his mana in his right fist, and with one punch he kills the snake. There are monster birds that are flying high up in the sky. The bird will be a big trouble if they attack Mord. But there's nothing to worry as the birds only attacks those who tries to climb the wall. Mord is safe in this case as he is walking on the ground. So far, Mord has managed to find five seals, and all he need to find is the last one, and then he can finally gain the world fragment. Mord walks on and on and goes deeper. The deeper he goes, he can sense more mana. Mord is already tired from fighting with all the monsters on his way, and he all has not much mana left as he used the divine blood five times. But at last Mord has come in front of the sixth seal, and he can see a huge dragon statue. The statue is so big that only climbing it will be a hassle. As he was standing and staring at the statue, a huge noise occurs, and he quickly looks back and sees that a huge ogre is coming towards him. Mord gets shocked to see that an ogre appears out of nowhere. Ogre is a monster that even a magic fighter that learned sword impulse would have trouble with. And they're also dense in mana and have a physical body on par with bodies enhanced with physical reinforcement level one. The ogre then shouts and attacks Mord. Mord quickly dodged the attack and the attack lands on the ground and cracks it. Ogres are normally four meters in size, but this guy is taller than five meters. The ogre again attacks Mord, and he again dodged it. Mord then counterattacks with concentrate mana in his hand. He hits the ogre's face, and it spits blood from its mouth. The ogre then catches Mord with his hand and throws it at a wall. Mord flies away and hits the wall and cracks it. He also bleeds from his mouth. Mord understands that he cannot defeat it with impulse only. The ogre runs towards him and throws a punch at him. The punch hit Mord, but it didn't do any damage to him. At the right time, he awakens his divine blood, and from the power of it, the ogre flies away and falls flat on the ground. Mord then walks towards the ogre. The ogre quickly gets up and screams. Mord jumps high in the sky and attacks the ogre with impulse. The attack hits the ogre's head, and the head of the ogre brusts. Mord thought that he would defeat the ogre without using his divine blood, but he was too conceited. He then gets down from the ogre's body and jumps to the head of the dragon statue. He sees the statue of the god of combat at the top, the dragon, and finds it odd about the height of the statue.
Mord finds it a bit odd as the height of the statue is smaller than Archduke Vernar's, who is 2.5 meters. He then decides to leave this matter aside and starts to unseal. He drops his blood on the head of the statue and gets excited to think that finally the world fragment is going to be his. He waits for a while, but nothing happens. He starts to think that if he has done something wrong, according to the novel, Mord should have get the world fragment by now. Mord then starts to leave as he wants to check if the other seals are unsealed properly. As Mord is about to leave, he heard a voice from behind which says that he expected Mord to be hot-tampered as he is his descendant. Hearing this, Mord quickly turns back and gets shocked to see that the statue has come to life. The reason Mord decided to enter the God of Combat's grave was because he remembered that Aiden had obtained a world fragment inside it. Thus, there's no way he would be aware of these events unless it was written in the novel. But however, Mord didn't accept something like a stone statue to move like this. He thinks that it is a hidden trail. Mord then asked that who is he? The old man didn't answer and says that he likes Mord's energy and also asked him that how old he is. Mord gets angry and awakes his divine blood and says to answer his question first. Seeing the awakened state of Mord, the old man gets impressed. Mord then punched the man, but his punch didn't affect the man. The man then gives him a headbutt by saying that he is rushing too much. Getting hit by the headbutt, Mord flies away and hits a wall. The man rushed towards Mord and says that he will now give him a proper greeting, saying this. The man throws a punch at Mord's stomach. As the punch hits Mord's stomach, he falls from the sky and hits the ground hard and breaks it. Fortunately, he didn't get serious injuries, and he gets up, and while whipping the blood on his face, he thinks that if he is seeing an illusion, the old man gets down and comes towards Mord and asks if he really didn't know who he is. Mord replies that he is well aware that he is a stone statue of the god of combat, Vernars. The man tells Mord that he is wrong, as he is what the god of combat, Vernars, left behind, and he is his shadow as a human. Hearing this, Mord gets shocked and recalls that within the novel, the god of combat's grave was known to have the remnants of his human self. So this would be the grave most suited to his human form, not his godly form. However, in the novel, it was recorded that the stone statues of his life achievements existed. Mord then understands that Vernar's remnants were stone statues that had been imbued with his will. Seeing Mord is thinking hard, the man says that if it is so hard to believe, then he will show him now that this is reality and it really hurts. Saying this, he rushed towards Mord and punched him. Mord tries to block the punch with his arm. The man laughs and says that he is much weaker than he has thought. Mord gets angry and says, to stop playing with him, looks like you still have energy left to face me. Perfect. This is what I expected from my descendant. The old man said this and throws a punch at Mord. Mord sees the punch coming and quickly dodged it and gets behind the man. He then throws an impulse ball at the old man. Seeing this, the old man says that he didn't expect him to use a trick like that. The old man then hits the impulse ball and a huge explosion occurs and covers the area with thick dust. Mord ambushed the old man, but the old man saw him and grabs his face and throws him in the sky. Only a weak and like you would need a trick like that. The old man said this and jumps towards Mord. The old man gets closer to Mord and starts to punch him like a madman and says that he loves to beat people with bare hand. While getting hit by the man, Mord thinks that if he is dreaming as the difference between their strength is so big that even with his divine blood powers, he is unable to stand in front of this man. The man then smashed Mord on the ground and by sitting on his chest, he continues to punch at Mord's face. After a while, as Mord gets knocked out, the man stops his punches and gets up from Mord and gives him a nice kick. Getting hit by the kick, Mord flies away and hits a wall and gets his senses back. The man then tells Mord that he is disappointed in him as he would be death by now if this was a real fight. Mord shouts at the man to shut up as he is not doing yet. As Mord gets up, he gets shocked to see that his awakened divine blood state is being released. Huh? That's all it took to kill your divine blood state? Are all my descendants as weak as you? The old man asked. The old man then walked towards Mord and said that it's enough for the introduction and asked Mord that if he believes who is he now. Mord says that if he really is the god of combat, Vernar's shadow. The old man replied that he is and says that he can treat him as Vernar's is here. 
The man then says that he has seen plenty of faces who has challenged this dungeon, but he is the first one to awaken him. He then asked Mord that how much time has passed since he has been awakened. Mord answered that it's been 500 years. The man gets shocked to hear that so much time has passed away, and it's not like that the riddle was so hard to solve. It's most likely that nobody has been able to awaken you. Because after you reached the heavens, there had been a conflict between your two sons regarding the successor as the god of combat. The loser took most of his subordinates and a few artifacts of yours, and while the losers were unable to get their revenge, one of the artifacts set lost, and that artifact had the secrets to this place. Mord tells this to the man. Mord then thinks that as recorded in the novel that, in the far future, someone finds those artifacts within the ruins of the god of combat, and that person becomes Aiden's aid and helps him gain a world fragment. Hearing the stroy from Mord, the man feels ashamed, and then he asked Mord that if he is aware that what it means to awaken him. Mord straightforwardly answered that he is not aware of it. Hearing Mord's answer, the old man gets shocked and asked Mord that why did he had spilled blood onto the stone. Mord replies that he had done so in order to obtain the world fragment. He then thinks that what is going on, as according to the novel, Aiden has obtained the fragment in the same location, but he didn't meet with the god of combat, Vernars. Mord then runs his own calculation and comes to a conclusion that the god of combat can only be awakened when he is offered blood from his own bloodline. The shadow then tells Mord that the meaning of him waking him up and the reason why he left behind the shadow is to teach him divine blood embodiment. Mord thinks that if he is going to teach him how to properly utilize the divine blood power, he then questioned him that wouldn't it be better if he just impart his teaching to his future generations? That would be great. But there's one doubt. Will all the generations reach the stage of being able to teach the subsequent generations, the man said to Mord. He also further tells that the talent of utilizing divine blood is proportional to one's concentration of blood. But however, the generational cycle repeats and human blood is mixed, causing the blood of the god of combat to thin out. In other words, the later generations will find it difficult to properly use the divine blood power. But through learning, one can develop it to a certain extent. Even so, the issue is if there's someone who's able to teach that. And that's why the god of combat's grave was made. It's a training ground for descendants and a method of teaching. When one can properly embody divine blood and instinctively reach that stage, he can perfectly use the power of divine blood. Mord also thinks that during this 500 years, the blood of the god of combat has thinned out by a lot, and the reason why the Archduke Vernars is the villain is because he broke a taboo caused by the limitation of thinned out divine blood. Mord gets it that it is a golden opportunity for him, even though he is able to awaken divine blood, but he cannot maintain is for too long, so he has to train harder in order to completely embody divine blood. Mord gladly agrees to take his training and asks him that how he is going to train him. The old man smiles and says that they will fight over and over and by, getting beaten over and over, he will learn the technique. Mord makes the annoyed face and says that if he is basically saying that he is not going to teach him anything other than fighting with him, the old man replies that that's how he learn how to fight and tells Moore to stop making that face. Don't you think I'll die before I learn how to do it? My ribs broke just before Mord says this to the old man. The old man asked Mord to check if the pain is still there. Mord taps his chest and gets surprised, so see that there is no pain in his ribs. The old man then says to Mord that he has two good news for him. The first one is that as long as they are in this area, both injuries and mana will regenerate immediately. And secondly, he will not be his opponent. At that time, a young man jumps from the top the dragon and lands on the ground with a huge impact. The young man then gets up and looks at Mord and laughs. Seeing this young man, Mord recognizes him as the ten-year-old god of combat. And by seeing that his hair is not silver... Mord figures out that at that time he hasn't gotten to the stage where he can completely use divine blood. The old man tells Mord to fight this ten-year-old god of combat, which is a bit suitable for him. What do you mean, suitable? He won't be able to withstand one punch, the ten-years-old Werner says this. 
He also further tells Mord to run away, as it will be quite embarrassing for him to get beaten by a ten-years-old kid. Seeing the ten-years-old Werner's Mord gets impressed as he has such a nice physique in this young age. But however Mord thinks his physique is superior of this kid, he then tells Vernars to shut his mouth as there's a saying that empty vessel make the most noise. Then by unleashing his divine blood, Mord tells Vernars to unleash his own and get ready to fight. Vernars tells Mord that he don't use divine blood as if he does that he will be killed. Hearing this, Mord gets angry and attacks Vernars. As he attacks, Mord found that Vernars was not bluffing about his powers as, as soon as he attacks Vernars, knocks him out within ten seconds. The young Vernars then asked the old one that if he is really his descendant. The both of the Vernars talks to each other about Mord's lacking of fighting experience and thinks that they now have to teach him how to fight. Mord has come to his senses, and as he hears this, he feels ashamed of him. The old Vernars then ask Mord that even though he has unleashed his divine blood, so why he is unable to fight properly. Mord replies that he has never learnt how to fight. Verners founds it a bit confusing, because as a descendant of the god of combat, how come he has never learnt how to fight? Mord then explained him about the processes he went through to get here, and the way the Archduke's blood was being managed. Hearing this, Vernars gets angry, as he didn't like the way the family is running and says that if he gets out of here, he would have gone to Rampage. The old Vernars then tells Mord to leave this matter aside, and tells him to follow his instructions as he will guide him so that he can go against the ten years old Vernars. After that, eleven rounds has finished, and in this rounds Mord was unable to lay a single blow on the young Vernars. After getting instructions from the old Vernars, Mord was able to put a fight, but all of his attacks gets blocked, and he ultimately loses. Like this, seventy-four rounds has passed and Mord is improving, but the young Vernars is not an easy opponent. Mord learns how to punch properly and to change the trajectory of his punch. But the young Verners knows this all and easily dodged the punches and kicks Mord in the face and sent him flying. Mord gets instantly recovered, but the young Verners rush towards him and punched on his side and mocks him by saying not to be scared as he is not going to die in this place. By looking at Mord's face, the young Verners asked Mord that if he is frustrated to see that none of his attacks are working on him. Mord didn't say anything as he gets that he is slowly getting stronger because in this round he was able to touch Vernar's face. Then again, the fighting starts and Mord is beaten one-sidedly. After 272 rounds, Mord tells the old Vernars that changing the trajectory of the punches is not working. The old Vernars tells Mord that he needs to make an opening. Mord understands this and in the next fight he see the movements of the ten years old Vernars. As Vernars gets close to him to counterattack, Mord sees this coming and quickly jumps high in the sky. Vernars gets shocked to see this, and as he looks up, he sees that Mord is already above him. Mord then uses his divine blood power and kicks on Vernars' head and smashed his face on the ground. The old Vernars gets impressed to see that Mord is putting all the things that he has learnt into action. Mord also gets happy as after so many rounds he gets to land a clear hit on the ten years old Vernars. After that, the ten years old Vernars gets up with sudden outburst of mana and he makes an impulse ball in his hand and tells Mord that as he is getting used to it, he will no longer go easy on him. Young Vernars throws the ball at Mord. Mord tires to stop it with his hands, but he is been pushed back, and if this goes on his body will be shredded into pieces. Mord then looks at the old Vernars and thinks that why is he not stopping him? As Mord gets distracted, the young Vernars uses his moment and punched Mord hard. Getting hit, Mord flies away and hit the wall and spits blood from his mouth. Even after seeing the injured and hopeless Mord, the young Vernars didn't stop his attack and continuously punched at Mord's stomach. Mord screams in pain and blood comes from his mouth. Young Vernars then grabs Mord's hand and throw his in the sky. He then jumps above Mord and kicks him and he hits the ground and shatters it. Mord's divine blood state is gone and he is unable to activate it. He is also in a state where he is unable to move his fingers. While Mord is laying, he hears something cracking and sees that the dragon's head is falling on him. As he is unable to move, the head falls on him. Seeing the huge explosion, the young Vernars gets happy, but Mord comes out of it without any injuries. At the right time, his body gets recovered, and he pushed the head and shatters it. Seeing this, 
The young Verners admits that Mord has guts. Mord gets up and sees that the part of the stone is over his leg and he is unable to move his leg. The young Verners jumps from above and starts to fall towards him. Mord gets panicked as he is unable to use divine blood power as his mana is completely drained. He needs eight seconds to replenish his mana. As young Vernars is falling, Mord starts to count down the seconds. Now Mord needs four seconds, but Vernars is close to him. But Mord didn't panic and puts a smile on his face and takes a small stone and shoots it in the Vernars' eyes. Mord's attack landed accurately, and Vernars' eyes gets red from getting hit, but the stone. Verners is unable to see with his eyes, so his punch landed on the wrong place. Verners gets angry and activates his divine blood and punched at Mord with his full strength. At that moment, the time needed for Mord to activate his divine blood gets completed, and he actives his divine blood and quickly dodged the punch. The punch hits the ground and leaves a huge dent on it. Mord then rushed towards Vernars from his back, and as he is about to punch him, Mord mocks Vernars a bit. He says to Vernars that he thaw that he would be death if he awakes his divine blood, but the now it seems like he is getting beaten instead. Saying this, Mord lands a clean hit on Vernars' face and gets shocked to see that the punch has no effect. Vernars says that the punch is so soft, and he asked Mord that if he thought that he would be able to crack his skull with this soft punch. Vernars gets mad and he garbs Mord's neck. And on the other hand, he creates an impulse ball and tells Mord that he will now show him what he needs to do. As the impulse ball is about to hit Mord, the old Verners told them to stop. As the young Verners didn't stop, he steps in between them and he pushed Mord back and blocks the impulse ball with his hand. Seeing him, the young Verners tells him to move aside. The old Verners then questioned him that what he is doing, as he sure explained him before, that their role is to teach their descendants. The old Vernars then declares the end of the training. The young one rebels and says that would he have said the same thing if he was in his position. Hearing this, the old man gives a deathly look, and by seeing this, the young Vernars backs off. Mord sees this and feels relieved. At that time, the whole place starts to shake, and some cracks has also appeared in the sky. Seeing this, the old Vernars tells Mord to come closer to him as he has something to give him as the reward of the training. As Mord gets closer to the old man, he tells Mord that it seems like that he has another god's blood other than his. The old Vernars also says that he never thought that the other god's blood in Mord's body is from a greater god, and also it is his father, the god of the heavens, Arita's blood. The old man explained the reason that why Mord's bloodline of Arita is able to preserve itself in his body is because when he have become a separate entity, parts of Arita's bloodlines are part of the Vernars. The old man then thinks that how stronger Mord will be with this blood combination. The old man then rewarded Mord by giving him the blessing of the body of the god of combat. With this blessing of the god of combat, Mord will be able to awaken that authority. The old man puts his fingers tips onto Mord's forehead and passed a lightning-like thing onto Mord's whole body. Mord feels more powerful, and he also gets a bit confused as the term body of the god of combat has never appeared in the novel. As the place starts to break, the old man bit Mord farewell and says that they will meet again soon. Mord sees that the ten years old Vernars is pissed off, so he praises him for his strength and says that even if the current generation ganged up on him, they will probably lose to him. He also thanks him because he has learnt a lot of things from him. Hearing this, the young Verners gets a bit shy and tells Mord that there is no need to state the obvious. He then tells Mord that there are a couple more sites that the god of combat has left behind other than this grave. And since it seems like this is the end, he tells Mord to try looking for the other sites. Mord replies that he will surely look for the other sites. At that time, the whole place gets destroyed, and Mord founds himself laying in a dark room. He gets up and sees that the world fragment is in front of him. The world fragment is a tool used by great ancient gods when creating this world. Thus, a piece of a perfect world. Aiden used these world fragments to gain immense power, eventually leading the world to an end. However, since Mord took the world fragment first, Aiden won't be able to grow as strong as in the novel. From Aiden's perspective, he will surely be furious that an extra stole his power. But Mord hopes he understand that this is all for a real happy ending. 
and this is how Mord successfully acquire his first world fragment. In the outside world, we can see Erna Vernars is sitting on a tree branch and is writing something. At that time, her subordinate comes and gives her the new that Mord has come out of the god of combat's grave. Erna says that she already knew it, and that's why she is planning to be a nice sister. Unlike the other families, the candidates for successor of the Verners family were not just the Archduke's children. All children of the Archduke and children of all traditional bloodlines of the same generation were able to compete as a successor candidate. Each successor candidate slowly increased their forces by gathering warriors of Vernars. At this point, there were five candidates that were in close contention for the position. The seventh child, Erna. The sixth child, Viden, the fourth child, Huron, the third child, Dren, and the Archduke, Aren. The news that Mord cleared the grave of the god of combat had an immense effect on all of them. We can see the sixth child, Viden, is drinking his tea and tells his subordinate that the other successors will surely force Mord to join them. He orders his subordinate to bring Mord on their side before the other successors. After that, we can see at the castle of Archduke Vernars in the outer castle, First Regent Mord is given a place to live there. He is also provided with two servants that will be in his service 24-7. Mord thinks that because he is of Vernars' blood, and he has awakened his divine blood. So the family is treating him well as they have permitted him to stay in the outer castle, First Region. This outer castle, First Region, is the region where only the most rich are able to stay, and most ordinary warriors stay in the second region. But they are giving Mord to live in the first region is quite impressive. It's not the end they have also provided a huge training space for Mord near his place. Mord feels that he has become a Nobel as he has servants and a huge palace like this. At that time, some people knocks at the door and calls for Mord. The maid opens the door and two warrior gets inside. Warriors can be split into four ranks. Normal warrior, intermediate warrior, advanced warrior, high warrior. And by looking at the two warriors, Mord gets that they are intermediate warrior. The warrior says to Mord that they are here to deliver a message from young master Dren. One of them starts to read the message, which says that, Sir Mord, I heard stories about you. Impressive, as I believe that your talents will be of great use. I hope that you will serve me as a warrior of mine. I promise that you will receive the greatest of welcomes. After hearing the message, Mord asked them, who is this young master Dren? Mord is unable to remember Dren, as there were many successors in the novel. Hearing this, the warriors gets angry and shouts at Mord that he is ignorant, and if he is trying to start something with them. Mord replies that he honestly cannot remember. At that time, another voice comes which asked Mord that, then if he know who young master Viden is. The warriors turns around and gets shocked to see Wolves is here. Mord remembers that Viden is the sixth young master, and by looking at Wolves, Mord gets that he is also an intermediate warrior, and he has something more than the Verner's blood. Wolves then talks with the other warriors and says that he is here for the same reason they are here. The other warrior gets mad at Wolza and tells him to get lost as they have arrived earlier. Wolves mocks them because they use orders when they lack in strength. The warrior gets angry and tells Wolves to go outside with them. Hearing this, Woolsey gets angry and gives a death look and tells them to get out before he destroy them in the name of teaching his juniors. Seeing Woolsey mad, the warriors get scared and takes his leave by saying that they will make him regret this. Mord sees all this and understands that not all intermediate warriors are in the same level. As the two warriors left, Woolsey introduce him to Mord and pull his hand forward to have a handshake with Mord. Mord shakes hand with Woolsey and says that it would be more appropriate if he will address Woolsey as his senior. Woolsey replies that calling Sir Woolsey would be fine as if he gets into details like that. The two warriors that just left are also his senior. Woolsey also says that the true ranking of a warrior is not about age or rank, but to honor someone for the mere reason that they were here longer is quite funny. Mord agrees with Woolsey's statement. He then asked Woolsey that what is there for him if he joined Viden, the sixth young master's side. Wolves replied to Mord that since he is a rising star, he had brought a set of offers to suit him. Wolves then gets closer to Mord and says that anyways, the offer doesn't mean anything as he will do whatever it takes to take him to his lord, and even it means beating him to a pulp. 
Wolves also tells Mord to get a grip on the reality and not to be so excited just because he beats up a old fool. Mord understands that Wolves is here to take a fight with him, and it seems like his only intention is to take Mord by force. Mord finds this situation beneficial for him, as he will be able to see the affects of the training in the God of Combat's grave. Mord then offers Wolves that they should have a fight. After that, both of them moves to the training ground. Mord then asked Woolsey that if he needs a weapon, as it seems like he is not a bloodline of Vernars. By releasing Mana, Woolsey says that although he is not a bloodline descendant of Vernars, but he don't use things like swords in the first place, as he has something much stronger than that. After that, the mana wraps around the hand of Woolsey and takes the shape of a gauntlet, and this technique name is Impulse Gauntlet. Sir Mord, I heard that you barely won against the instructor by using your divine blood. This Impulse Gauntlet is an advanced skill that beginner warriors like you could never imitate. Since you can't use this, your chances of defeating me without using divine blood is zero. Woolsey says this to Mord. Later then, he gets shocked to see that Mord has copied the impulse gauntlet and gets ready to fight. Woolsey gets a bit nervous, as there is no way Mord would learn this in just four days. While Woolsey was in shock, Mord rushed towards him and says that if he thinks that he would be the same, despite four days passed by. Saying this, Mord kicked Woolsey and pushed him back. Mord didn't stop there. He again rushed at him and punched the ground in front of Woolsey. The ground shatters and Wolse falls on the ground. Wolse gets that Mord is too strong. He then thinks that Mord has been hiding his strength as it is impossible to improve this. Much is just four days. He then gets up and laughs, saying that he is impressive while he was underestimating him. Mord begins to amplify his mana and tells Woolsey not to be so surprised, as it is just a warm-up. From the amount of mana coming from Mord, Wolves gets curious and asked Mord that why he was hiding his strength when he was fighting Instructor Daisley. Mord thinks that it would be a waste of time explaining it to him, as he would not believe him, as there is no way a person can get so much stronger in just four days. But however for Mord, there are two things that make this possible. First the blessing of the body of the god of combat. This blessing not only allows him to use authority, but brings out his innate talent. As a result, both his physical abilities and mana are able to grow dramatically. The second is using the world fragment as a mana source. From his memories of the novel, he was able to figure out how to use it, although he hasn't used the world fragment yet. As Mord stays silent, Wolves gets that he has no intention of answering him. Wolves then tells Mord that as he has underestimated him, so he will show him his full power. Saying this, Woolsey begins to release mana, and his body also begins to change. Mord sees this and gets shocked as the body of Woolsey starts to trun into a wolf. Mord remembers this phenomenon as within the novel, there are people who have been afflicted with the full moon curse. While most of them change under the full moon, attacking humans as they are consumed by rage, but there are those few individuals that have overcome the curse are able to use that power whenever they please. A fused form of human and beast, they are called lycanthropes. Wolves gets a lot bigger, but in terms of mana, Mord is still above him. Mord then attacks Woolsey, but his attack has been blocked and he has been pushed back by Woolsey. Woolsey then tells Mord that even though he is better in mana than him, but he has gotten a lot bigger and stronger. Saying this, Wolves pushed Mord, and as he is about to trip over, Woolsey punched him in the face and sent him flying. Mord flies away and hits the wall hard and makes a dent on it. He also bleed from his mouth, while whipping the blood Mord thinks in his mind that Wolves is stronger than he thought, but not to the point where he need to use his divine blood. So to sum it up, he is above him in terms of mana, but Wolves is stronger and has a better build than his, so this balances out. Mord gets up and tells Woolsey that they should end this. Hearing this, Woolsey laughs and says that if he is submitting because he thinks he is going to lose to him without using his divine blood. Mord replies that if he use it, he is not confident that he won't kill him. Wolves then said Mord to stop bluffing and quickly release his divine blood. Mord says that he will not do that and he will defeat him in one go. Wolves laugh and mocks him, saying that he is getting beat up until now, so how it is possible that he will defeat him without using divine blood? 
Mord then tells him that he can defeat him in one go as he hasn't gone all out yet, saying this Mord starts to use the world fragment. The person who possesses the world fragment is able to use it by drawing out their mana. And after Mord cleared the god of combat's grave, he was successful in drawing out the fragment's mana with the training method, he read in the novel. Since he only have one fragment, he can only be blessed with the god of combat's body for 20 seconds. Mord starts to draw mana from the world fragment by seeing this. Woolsey gets a bit scared and says to Mord that he really a monster. Woolsey then rushed towards Mord and launched an attack. Mord easily dodges all the attacks and moves towards Woolsey. As he gets closer, he kicks him, but Woolsey blocks it. The kick was a trick so that Woolsey uses his both arms to block it. Mord then creates an impulse ball and throws it to Woolsey. Getting hit by the impulse ball, Woolsey flies away and hits the roof of Mord's house and breaks it. The other warriors that were present there gets worried about Woolsey. Woolsey is laying on the floor and thinks that he has lost, and now he cannot show his face to his master, Viden. While thinking of his master, he recall the conversation between him and Viden. Viden tells him that Mord will be a huge help for their position, so Viden requests for Woolsey's strength to bring him over on their side. Recalling this, Woolsey gets up and again comes in front of Mord but this time his appearance has changed a bit and he has grown a bit bigger. Seeing the sudden power of Woolsey, Mord thinks that this is his last trump card, so Mord also wants to take this seriously and starts to awaken his divine blood. As the fight is about to begin at that time, Erna Vernars comes and hits Woolsey and knocks him out. Seeing this, the other warrior rushed to her and says that what she is doing as Woolsey is carrying out young Master Veden's orders, if they had continued, one of them would have died, and the one who had a higher chance of dying was Woolsey. Erna says this to the warriors. She also said that as Woolsey hasn't perfected his second transformation, he has lost his consciousness and went crazy. Hearing her, the warriors understands the situation. She then orders the warriors to take Woolsey to the recovery room. Erna then moved towards Mord and introduce herself and says that she will give him special permission to call her older sister. Mord founds it cringy, so he decline her. After that, we can see that Erna is in her room and she is feeling embarrassed. Her butler then tells that as Mord is an illegitimate son, so he is worry of the legitimate ones. She understands it, and also she is impressed that Mord has defeated Woolsey without using his divine blood. Her butler is also shocked at this matter as Woolsey is a warrior who is about to be a high-rank warrior and Mord has defeated him easily. The butler also says that due to his incident, the competition of recruiting Mord will be higher. While they were talking about this, a warrior came rushing in and tell that Viscount Winsel has announced that Mord will accompany him on the Mwau obstruction mission. Hearing this, Erna gets shocked. After that, we can see that the house of Mord is completely repaired, and Woolsey is the one who provided all the repairing cost as a compensation. While Mord is standing in front of his house, he notices that Sir Kessner is waiting for him in his house. Seeing him, Mord quickly gets up and sits in a room with Sir Kessner. Kessner tells Mord that why he is always causing a scene. Mord replies that he has nothing to do. All the people wants a piece of him. Kessner then tells Mord that in ten days, he and his subordinates are going to complete a task and if he would like to join them. Mord asked about the details of the task and Kessner replies that it is to prevent demonification. While the existence of monsters within demonified dungeons and normal dungeons remain the same, they are different in terms of their origin. Most ordinary dungeons are merely natural occurrences or accidents. However, demonification is a purposeful act of demons trying to take over the humanity. Not only do monsters appear in the dungeons, but strong demons as well, playing a vital role. Demonification can be categorized into three stages of progression. Stage one is when an unknown vortex appears. Stage two is when the vortex solidifies and it becomes possible to enter. Stage three is when the nearby land gets corrupted and beings of the demonic realm become much more powerful if the demonification progression isn't stopped by stage three. That is when a dungeon break occurs. Once a dungeon break occurs, both worlds will be fully connected and demonic beings will start entering the human world. Since stage three is when damage is caused to the human world, it is ideal to stop things during stage two. 
Also, only those who have awakened their divine blood are able to reach the heart of the stage, two dungeons and destroy its core. That is the reason why the Vernars family who possess the god of combat's blood is considered precious. Kessner also tells Mord that it is a great opportunity for warriors like him, but this place is really dangerous as a lot of people has died there, so he tells Mord to decide carefully. Mord thinks that as Kessner is the Archduke's confidant, and if he puts a good impression on him, it will be a huge help for him later on. And also, as he is tried of dealing with people like Woolsey, he thinks that it is worth to take on the risk. After thinking for a while, Mord decides to go with Kessner and his subordinates. He then asked Kessner that when will be start training. Later on, Kessner takes Mord to the training ground where all the other subordinates of his are training. He introduces Mord to all of them and tells all the achievements of his, such as defeating Woolsey and Instructor Daisley. Mord looks at them and thinks that as they are Kessner subordinates, so all them must be an advanced level warrior. So he thinks that they will not accept him as he is just a new warrior. Mord decides to prove his strength. At that time, a brown-haired boy comes in front and holds his hands and greets him nicely, and saying that he has heard rumors about him being the super rookie. Mord gets totally confused to see them accepting him so easily. All the other subordinates all greets Mord Kessner, then stops them and tells them to focus. He tells them to focus on team working for the next ten days, as he will be leaving for the god of combat's grave. He then tells Erickson to take care to Mord. As Kessner leaves, Erickson goes to Mord, tells that he is Erickson, an advanced warrior. He so introduces Mord with another advanced warrior, Reki. He further says to Mord that Ricky and him are both from bloodlines that are not of the Verners. So his role will be to work with Reki and support Sir Kessner at the center of our formation. After finishing the introduction part, Erickson tells everyone to get ready for some training. Ten days later, we can see Kessner has successfully completed the God of Combat's grave. People congratulate him for clearing it successfully. Kessner thanks them and quickly comes to the training ground. As he arrives, he sees that Mord is training by seeing his strength. Kessner gets shocked as how quickly he gets this powerful, seeing Kessner Erickson comes running to him and greets him. Kessner asked him about Mord's training. Erickson replies that they have managed to teach him the important formations. But since he's not training in magic combat, they are focusing on his basic abilities first. They are also teaching him how to utilize his physical reinforcement to nullify venoms. Hearing this, Kessner asked Erickson that what he thinks about Mord. He is quick on the uptake. However, what's more impossible to believe is the time he's able to keep his divine blood awakened. He's able to maintain it as long as Riki Erickson says this to Kessner. Kessner gets shocked as increasing the amount of time one can last in that state is not something one can achieve within a short period of time, and despite having only awakening his divine blood recently, he's on par with Reki, who awakened 12 years ago. Mord is sparring with Riki and finds it really fun, as every time he learns something new, he can feel himself growing stronger. Then in the next morning, everyone is ready to go to the mission area. Kessner then again asked them if they are fully ready for his mission, as it will be a really dangerous one. Erickson replies that they will be fine with Mord around them. Kessner then looks at Mord and asked him that if he is sure that they can return safely. Mord answered yes with a confident face. After that, all of them depart towards the mission area. After that, all of them reaches to the mission side and gets shocked to see that the second demonification has already started. At that time, a warrior comes to Kessner and greets him. Kessner praises for working hard on watch. He then asked him that what happened as the erosion is earlier than expected. The warrior replies that there is another sign of demonification in this area, and although the erosion hasn't started yet, but it seems like a matter of time before it starts. If the demonification occurs in two places in proximity to each other, the possibility that they will fuse increases. After fusion, the process of erosion gets faster, and the danger also increases. Hearing this report, everyone gets tensed as they have to hurriedly wrap things up. Kessner tells them to get ready as there is no time for a break. They will quickly get into to the dungeon and immediately target the center. 
After that, all of them gets into the dungeon. As they successfully enters, they sees a huge castle in front of them, which seems like a picture. The castle is the center, and from there, tons of monsters come rushing towards them. There were groups of hellhounds and ogres. Seeing this, Kessner tells Riki and Mord to quickly awaken the divine blood. Kessner then orders everyone to move out. Expect for Mord and Riki as they will be with him to perform the divine blood trap technique. The other three rushed and attacks the monster. The boy with the long sword and the white-haired girl swiftly begins to kill the monster. On the other hand, Erickson uses his spear and throws it hard that it kills bulk of monsters in one go. Kessner was seeing all of this, and he finds it a bit unusual as compared to the monster's number. Their pace is too fast. Riki speaks up and says that it is occurring because of the demonification fusion. The three of them awakens their divine blood. Kessner then tells Mord and Riki to handle the Cyclops as he will be handling the Eaton. Hearing Kessner's order, the two of them move quickly. Mord comes in front of the Cyclops, and by using his mana, he throws a punch at them. One punch for Mord is enough to kill tons to Cyclops. Reike looks at this and thinks that Mord is really something. In front of Reike comes a huge red demon. The demon gathers mana into its mouth and is about to launch it. At that time, Mord come flying and punch the demon in the face. The attack of the demon gets destroyed as its jaw gets broken from the punch. Mord then signals Reek to attack from the right. Both of them launch their combo attack on the demon. Getting hit from both of them, the demon falls on its knees and screams in pain. Mord approaches closer to the demon and hits it in the eyes. Riki gets shocked to see Mord's strength, and this time he thinks of Mord as the real monster. From the punch of Mord, the demon explodes. Riki uses his mana shield to cover Mord and himself. Mord thanks Riki for covering him. Riki tells Mord that they should hurry up and go to Kessner as he is already on his way to the center. As they gets there, the both of them sees Kessner is surrounded by five flying demons. At that time, Mord gets teleported to an unknown house. He gets confused as he didn't know what just happened to him. At that moment, a voice comes to his ears, which says that it is impressive to think that he is still fine after falling from that height. Mord then look forward and sees that a being is sitting on a huge throne and is radiating huge amount of mana. Behind the throne, there is a huge gate, seeing this Mord gets that this is the gate that connects the demon world and this world. Mord also understands that he is currently at the deepest part of the dungeon, and the being that is sitting on the throne is the dungeon core. The demon stands up and says that he is Baron Ultaz, the one who has been chosen by the root of the formidable darkness. On the other side, Riki gets shocked to see that Mord is gone. He tells Kessner about this. Kessner asked him that where is the exact spot when Mord was vanished. Riki tells Kessner to follow him. As they walks a bit, the both of them gets shocked. On the other hand, Mord asks the demon Baron Ultas that why did he bring him here to the deepest part? The demon replied that there has been a merge between two dungeons and another Lord class demon flew in and they both have been itching to fight, so they both made a bet that the loser will have to protect the core here, and the winner will go out and enjoy their dinner. So the reason for Reek and Kessner being surprised is because the Lord, class demon that won the bet, gets in front of them. The demon Ultaz also says to Mord that as there were three divine blood, so he summoned the youngest one, as it's more of his style to catch a kid rather than an experienced one as they're more delicious because their meat is softer when they're young. Mord gets nervous as he has to fight one-on-one -on -one with a Lord-class demon. The stronger the demon is, who is the core of a demonized dungeon, the more demons can appear inside the dungeon. The ranks of normal demons are low-class, intermediate demons. The ranks of the upper echelon Lord-class demons are divided into Marquis, Count, Viscount, Earl, and Baron. Above them are the monarch-level demons, the Duke and Grand Duke. Among them, a baron is a powerful demon that can kill most advanced warriors at once. On the Kessner's side, he is very angry as he is worried about Mord. As the demon is about to move, Rike comes in between them, and he tells Kessner that he will assist him in this fight. Kessner tells Reiki to move as he is enough for this fight. By saying this, Kessner awakes his divine blood state, and the fight between him and the demon starts.
Inside the castle, the Mord also awakens his divine blood, as he cannot take it easy when he is fighting a Lord-class demon. Seeing the awakened state to Mord, the demon says there is no use of it. At that time, Mord rushed towards him and kicks him. Getting hit from the kick, the demon slides back and realizes that Mord is more powerful than he has thought. The demon then actives a huge spell, named the Dance of the Fire Spirit, and throws it at Mord. Mord uses his Mirage Break to counter the spell. As both of their attacks collided, a huge explosion occurs. Seeing this, the demon laughs as he thinks that Mord is death. At that time, Mord uses the smoke as a cover and ambushed the demon and land a clear hit on its face. The demon flies away and hit a wall. Mord didn't stop there. He creates many impulse balls and throws them at the demon. The balls hit the demon. Mord has been in many fights, but in all that fights, he has never give his all. But this is the first fight that he is trying to do his best. The demon uses his mana to get out from the impulse balls. The appearance of the demon has changed a bit, and it is radiating more mana. The demon then rushed towards Mord. Mord begins to use the power of the world fragment, and he also moved towards the demon. Both of them clashes, and no one is overpowering the other. The demon brings out his long sword and swings it at Mord. Mord barely dodged the attack and jumps towards the demon and lands a clean punch on its face. Getting hit from the punch, the head of the demon shatters and the body on its melts, and a red orb-like thing comes out of the demon's body. Mord recognizes the orb as the core of the dungeon. Outside the castle, Kessner has also killed the demon and is about to depart towards the castle in search for Mord. Reke also wishes to go with him, but at that time, Mord comes to them. Seeing him, Kessner gets surprised and asked him if there was no demon. Mord replies that there was one, and he killed it and brings its sword with him. Seeing the sword, Kessner gets that the demon was a lord class. He then asked Mord that if he really defeated it. Mord replies that he had good luck, and he was able to win because the demon was underestimating him with its carelessness. Kessner gets impressed as, no matter how careless the opponent was, to think that a young man like Mord who just awakened his divine blood was able to defeat a Lord-class demon. He also praises Mord for this use's achievement. The reason why Kessner had Mord accompany them in this mission is all for Mord, because he didn't want a genius like him with a bright future get caught up in the competition for the succession and be trampled on. So he was intending to become a fence for him until Mord has enough knowledge and experience to choose his own future. Kessner thought that it would take at least five years for Mord to be able to choose his own future, but now he thinks that one year is more than enough for him. After the first demonization mission, several more missions were given to Kessner and his group, and thanks to that, they weren't able to return to the Grand Duchy until a month and a half later. After they returned to the Duchy, Kessner asked Mord that if he know about the banquet that will held in five days. Mord questioned, what is that? Kessner then tells Mord that it's an event where people who completed missions outside are gathered and officially awarded. It is held every two months, and only warriors can participate. The awards are also given by the Grand Duke himself. Kessner then takes his leave by telling Mord not to be late as the banquet is an important thing. Mord bids farewell to Kessner and thinks that as it a very big event, so lots of big shot will be present there. In the novel, Aiden continues to clash with Grand Duke Vernus and faces several crises. Aiden has one strong move that is able to turn the tide of the fight, the man who had been wandering away from his family. It was to make his comrade, Lion Vernus, the Grand Duke. After that, the War of Succession revolved around Lion Vernus, and ever since Lion succeeded to the throne of the Grand Duke, the Grand Duchy of Vernus was transformed into a powerful ally of Aiden's. Five days goes by easily, and today is the banquet, so Mord is getting dressed up. Mord thinks that as eventually he will be facing Aiden as an enemy, so he thinks to bring the Grand Duchy by his side. He goes to the banquet place, and as he arrives there, he sees Ericsson is waiting for him. The two of them greets each other and walks together inside the place. As they are about to enter, Ericsson tells Mord that after the award ceremony there will be a party, and he advises Moore to make some friends there. 
The two of them enters the banquet room and everybody starts to talk about Mord as he has defeated a Lord-class demon. As Mord walks, everyone is mesmerized by seeing the physique of his as he is so big even though he just turned 15. While they were walking, they comes face to face with Prince Dren, who a successor candidate and the three thought child, Erickson bows and greets the prince. Prince Dren tells Erickson so, leave them alone as he has something to talk with Mord. At that time, the sixth child Viden comes and tells Dren at talking like this is not consider a good manner. Dren asked Viden that, what does he mean? If you want to talk to him, isn't that quite obvious? You want to recruit Sir Mord? Viden said this to Dren. Hearing this, Dren laughs and says to Viden that he is wrong as he is here to apologize to Mord for the misbehavior of his subordinates. Hearing Sir Dren's statement. Everyone present in the banquet gets shocked. Dren then apologized to Mord for in front of everyone, and he gives Mord a present as a token of apology. Mord understands that Dren is forcing him to accept his apology in front of everyone in order to improve his own image. Mord then happily accepts the present. Dren thanks him for accepting it. Seeing this, Viden gets angry as he thinks that if this goes on, he will lose Mord. So Viden approaches Mord and tries to start a conversation with him, but at that time Erna comes and Mord starts to talk with. Viden gets angry and asks Erna that why she is interfering between them. Erna smiles and says that she is not interfering him as she only saw Dren talking with Mord. She also tells Viden that he didn't even greet Mord. Viden shouts at Erna and tells her to drop her arrogance as he will not leave her alone just because she is younger. With the way you're talking, someone might think that you're an older brother who cares about their younger sister, despite you being the one who broke my arm. Erna says this to Viden with an angry face. Viden then says that it was his mercy that he just broke one arm while she the one who broke his leg. The two of them starts to argue. At that time, Mord analysis all of them and gets that Dren Vernus is strategic but not a trustworthy person. Biden Vernus is not in his right mind, so he is excluded. And lastly, Erna Verners, she's a little strange. But he haven't seen her skills yet, so he will have to put her on hold. While the two of them are arguing at that time, the fourth child, Hurian Vernus, come and tells them to stop. Seeing him, Erna asked that why he is here as he was supposed to be working. He replied that he has left this subordinate behind, who will handle all of the work in his absence. Hurion. I wasn't aware that you liked banquets, though. Viden says this. Hurion replies that he didn't come here to enjoy the banquet. He is here to see the main character of all the rumors. Saying this, Hurion goes towards Mord and introduces himself as a Hurion, a high-ranking warrior. The both of them shakes hands, and Hurion asked Mord that if he defeated the Lord-class demon with his firm hands. Mord replied, yes. Hearing this, Hurion, this Mord is amazing, and he wants to have a fight with him. Mord thinks in this mind that Hurion is one of the two candidates that survived in the novel until the end, and he's someone that has a sad-looking face but possesses great talent. At that time, an announcement comes which says that the Archduke Ha arrived, and before the award ceremony, he will say something. The Archduke gets up on the stage and congratulates everyone for working hard for two months and spreading the name of the Vernars. He then starts the award ceremony. First he calls Kessner and give him the award. Then the next person he calls is Mord. Mord gets up on the stage and kneels down in front of the Archduke. Archduke praises him for achieving this and is 15 years old. He also says that from today onwards he will appoint Mord as intermediate warrior. Everyone in the hall gets impressed and talks good about him. The Archduke gives the trophy to him and says that he wants to see his skill one more time. After the award ceremony is over, Mord and the subordinates of Kessner is sitting together in a dinning and is calling with each other. At that time, Kessner comes to Mord and tells him to come with him for a moment. Mord follows him and the both of them stands in a corner. Kessner tells Mord not to drink so much as they are leaving early tomorrow as his teacher wants to meet with him. Then, in the next day, we can see Mord has come to the place where the teacher of Kessner resides in. He is shocked to see that only one person lives in this huge house. The gate of the house is so big that Mord is unable to open it. At that time, a voice comes to Mordhead, You're here. 
Mord gets shocked to see that the huge gate is opening and the person that is opening it is using telekinesis to open it. As the gate opens, Mord sees an old man radiating a dense amount of mana is standing in the middle of the room and greets him. Mord gets that the man is very strong. The man's name is Ilden Vernus. He is the general of the top elite legion called the Gatekeeper Legion in the Principality of Vernars. He is the older brother of the current Archduke and was referred to as the first young master. He was defeated in the God of Combat Spirit against his half-brother, the current Archduke, and lost everything. After that, he did not show himself to the public again. So Mord gets curious, so know that this person who hides from public has called him personally in his own palace. Sir Mord, I'm sure you heard about me from Kessner. As you can see, I'm blind. Do you mind if I touch your face? Ilden tells this to Mord. Mord also agrees to Ilden's wish. He then touches Mord's face and tells that he doesn't take after his father. Mord replies that the Archduke, his father, also thinks that he resembles his mother. Iden then asked Mord that if he know why he has called him here today. Mord replied that he didn't know anything about that the only thing he knows that he is here because Iden wants to see him. The old man tells Mord that he has called him here because he have an offer for he. But before telling anything about the offer, the old man requests Mord to have a spar with him as he would like to check his skills beforehand. Mord thinks that in novel, Ilden was looking for someone to help him bring down the Archduke, and he found Leon, who had a lot of potential because of Aiden's support. Mord decides to show his potential so that he has been chosen by him. Mord activates his divine blood and release a huge amount of mana that Ilden was pushed back. Seeing this, Ilden smiles, and on the other hand, Mord gets ready to fight. He dashed towards Ilden, and as he is about to land his first blow at that time, an impulse ball comes and hits him. Mord gets fly away from getting hit by the impulse ball. Mord lands successfully and gets that the impulse ball is not an ordinary one. Ilden has wrapped the impulse ball with his aura, and that is not something even a masterclass mana fighter can accomplish. And even though it's very difficult, Ilden is freely controlling dozens of it, Mord gets a bit tensed as an aura user is not easy to handle. Aura is above the realm of controlling mana. It is only achievable once your mana senses are one dimension above what they are normally. I'll prevent recoil using the God of Combat physique and push forward with brute strength. Mord makes this attack plan on the spot and, and rushed towards Ilden to execute his plan. Ilden sees that Mord's power has increased, so he attacks him with his impulse balls. Mord punched that impulse balls and destroys them. Seeing this, Ilden gets impressed and tells Mord that even though he is fast, but he can make more impulse balls. Mord anticipated this situation, and he has also came up with a plan to tackle it. As Ilden makes more impulse balls, Mord also starts to create his own impulse ball. Mord makes his ball huge and shoots it up. Mord's huge ball collides with dozens of Ildan's impulse balls and destroys them. Ilden gets impressed to see this trick of Mord and wanders from where he learned this sort of amazing techniques. Mord then ambushed Ilden from the back, but he gets surprised to see that his punch is not approaching Ilden's body. The aura around Ilden acts like an impenetrable armor. Mord gets back and decides to use the world fragment to bring up more mana. Ilden was thinking of Mord's fighting senses and style. At that time, Mord gets full of mana and launched a huge blow at Ilden's back. This time, the attack pierced through Ilden's aura armor and hits him. Ilden flies away at light speed and hits the wall. Mord gets happy that he has landed his attack. The place where Ilden falls gets covered with smoke, and from there, silver lightning starts to appear. Ilden then starts to laugh out loud. Seeing his Mord gets a bit nervous. There are several levels to divine blood opening. The first level changes your hair and eye color to silver. At the second level, silver lightning begins to surround you. This means that your existence is closer to the realm of the divine. Ilden actives his second level divine blood he gets behind. Mord is a flash, and as he about to throws a punch at Mord, Mord also turns around and punched him. Both of their punched clashed and a huge outbrust of mana occurs. But in front of Ilden's power, Mord was unable to stand in front of him. Ilden's punch power overpowers Mord punch and Mord gets pushed back and hits a wall. Ilden says to Mord that he has impressive reflex and even though he is in second level divine blood awakening, he managed to damage him and on top of that he is not intimidated at all. 
Ilden also says that it is enough as he didn't know what will happen if he gets more excited. Mord then deactivates his divine blood state and thinks that Ilden Vernars may have lost against the Archduke, but he's definitely one of the strongest Vernars, and he possesses monstrous power. Ilden walks towards Mord and says that he has seen enough what he is capable of. He then tells his offer to Mord, and the offer is to join the Gatekeeper Legion. In the Vernus Grand Duchy, there's a unit called the Gatekeeper Unit. Along with the Guardians, they're called the most elite unit of the Vernus Grand Duchy, where all members are veterans who honed their skills to the extreme and gained extensive real-life fighting experience. In the southern part of the continent, there is the Great Magic Barrier, and on the northern part, there is the White Magic Barrier. The Great Magic Barrier has been completely transformed into part of the Demon Realm, and it serves as the vanguard base for the demons, and those in charge there are known as the Guardians. The White Magic Barrier hasn't completely transformed into a part of the Demon Realm, but it is a gray zone where continuous demonization happens. It also serves as the base of operation for the Gatekeeper Unit, becoming a battleground where power struggles for dominance over the continent take place known as the rival of the Vernus Grand Duchy. They are another major military force, and the two are known as the Twin Mountain Ranges, the inheritors of the Divine Blood, the House of Ordas. One of the reasons why the Gatekeeper Unit is deemed to be dangerous is because of the death rate during their operations are high due to the frequent clashes with them. Mord, for all candidates for succession, you are not just someone who they desire to have but also someone that they don't want to hand over to their rivals. Threats and enticements will not cease until you decide on where you want to go. Although Kessner is guarding you right now, there's a limit on how long he can hold out, Ilden says. Ilden also tells Mord that the Northern White Magic Barrier is a territory that the candidates for succession can't touch, and that means he can concentrate solely on nurturing his skills. Mord finds the words of Ilden true, and he also needs to bring the northern white magic barrier on his side. Mord agrees with Ilden's offer, but he puts two conditions. Ilden asked Mord about the conditions first. The first condition is that Ilden will have to fight with Mord for a period of time starting from today onwards. Ilden gets a bit confused and asked Mord that if it means he will be teaching him. Mord replies that he does not need teach him, he just has to spar with him. Ilden hears this and asked Mord that if he is sure he can get stronger with just fighting. Mord replied yes. Hearing Mord's reply, Ilden laughs a bit and says that he is quite an interesting fellow. He then says that he can only be his sparring panter only for 20 days as after that he has to move to the north. Mord then tells Ilden his second condition. The second condition is that Mord wants a one year of freely roam outside under the pretext of a secret mission for the gatekeeper unit. Ilden gets surprised and asks Mord what he is thinking about. Mord replies that he has some personal matters to attend to. Mord thinks that during this time when Aiden is carefully building up his strength, he must strike preemptively before Aiden discovers the existence of the world, fragments, and starts moving in earnest. Ilden then tells Mord that he can only give him eight months. Mord expected this from Ilden, as he is very generous to the people who he thinks have great potential. He was the same in the novel. He showed an obsession, bordering into madness, on defeating the Grand Duke and creating a suitable heir for the Vernus bloodline. So he did everything in his power to make Leon into the Grand Duke. Mord then properly thanks Ilden for showing such generosity. Ilden smiles and thinks that even Grand Duke Harden wasn't strong as Mord at this age. And since Mord is not from the formal lineage, he can't become the Grand Duke, but he think that's actually better that way. As after all, there have been instances where illegitimate children served as the Grand Duke's shadow. After that, Mord gets out of there and goes to his place. The servant of his welcomes him. As he was walking, he notices some warriors in the training ground. Mord asked his servant about them. The servant replies that the warriors are Erna Verna's subordinates, and Ms. Erna is waiting for him inside. Mord gets inside and sees that Erna is waiting for him. Erna says hello to him and tells him to talk comfortably as she is also not from the formal lineage. Erna then push a box towards Mord and tells him to take this. Mord asked her, what is this? 
Erna didn't replies to Mord and asks that if the thing that Dren G. Sevi him is a good one. Mord takes the box in his hand and says that Dren gave him a quite expensive healing potion. Erna smiles and tells Mord to open the box as there is a better one inside the box. Mord open it and a sees a blue color elixir and gets surprised. The blue elixir is a treasure that transforms humans into a powerful being. For martial arts practitioners, it's a once-in-a-lifetime test for an opportunity for a breakthrough. The Tears of the Martial Arts God In the novel, when Aiden gave this treasure to Leon, it instantly strengthened his power. However, when another extra consumed it, they died due to their own power. It's a gift that I received for my 10th birthday. It's an extremely precious object. But if you can't handle that, it'll be just poison for you. So I recommend that you don't consume it immediately, but to drink it once you feel ready. Of course, you're capable of finding a way in overcoming it without dying, but there's no harm in being cautious, Erna says this. Moored this for a bit and asked her if she had consumed it. Yup, two years ago I almost died when I attempted clearing a demonization zone without knowing anything about the world's affairs. But then I was able to save a noble who was about to be killed, and as a gift they gave me one. It felt more meaningful than any birthday gift that I received, so I consumed it and kept this one for later. Erna replies this. Mord accepts the gift with gratitude. Erna has already heard that Mord will be leaving, so she says her farewell to Mord and says that the next time they will talk when he comes back. After that, Ina takes her leave. Then 20 days later, when Mord is about to leave secretly, he was caught by Kessner. Kessner lectures Mord that he is only a 15 years old kid, so he needs to be under the protection of an elder. As Kessner is taking Mord suddenly thanks him for everything he has done for him so far, Kessner protected him and never underestimated him, and nor did he ever hinder his path anyway. Mord thanks Kessner for all of this. He tells Kessner not to worry about him, as he is an intermediate warrior. Kessner understands Mord's feelings, smiles. He then put his hand on Mord's shoulder and wishes him good luck for his journey. After that, Kessner leaves and Mord also starts to get on his way. At that time, a boy wearing a black robe jumps from the wall and starts to follow Mord. Mord feels someone's presence behind him, so he turns around and sees there is no one. Those who obtain impulse will go through several phases. The first phase involves handling sword impulse or body impulse. The second phase involves dense, concentrated impulses like impulse gauntlet. The third phase involves remotely enhancing substances and imbuing them with impulse. The fourth phase compresses and accelerates frantic impulse power, resulting in explosive power. And then the fifth phase is the ultimate phase that most warriors can't reach even with a lifetime of training. It is a phase that requires relentless effort and overwhelming talent, aura. Those who can wield that power are called master-level magician, Mord trained with Ilden for 20 days. Ilden wasn't satisfied with just being his sparring partner. So he provided Mord with a lot of teachings, and thanks to that, Mord achieved tremendous growth, but he is still far from reaching the aura phase. And before leaving on his journey, Mord drinks the potion that Erna gave to him. It's early morning now. Mord is walking in the forest, and he has come far from the Archduke Palace. He is also aware that some warriors sent by the Grand Duke is following him, and they will suddenly launch an attack and try to capture him before he make his way to the north. While Mord is walking in the forest, he sensed an arrow is coming towards him. He quickly dodged it, and as he looks up the hill, he sees tons of archers is pointing their arrows towards him. Mord smiles, seeing this, and the all the archers launch their arrows at Mord. As the arrows land, huge explosion occurs, which overs the areas in dust and smoke, the archers on the hill thinks that they had got Mord, but as the smoke clears, they get surprised as Mord is completely fine as he used his divine blood state. By seeing this, the group of mages activates their skills and shoots fireball at Mord. Mord gets completely surrounded by fireball. He used his impulse balls like Ilden and chants the trajectory of the fireballs towards the enemies. The fireball hits them, and fire spreads all around the forest. All the mages and archers gets knocked out expect for one, who use his mana shield and escape the explosion. The one that is alive is impressed to see the power of Mord. 
Mord then noticed him and rushed towards. Mord throws a punch on the mana shield, but it was hard. So as he about to punch harder at that time, a brown-haired boy comes from side and attacks Mord with a sword. Mord uses Aura Gauntlet to block the sword and then punched the boy and sent his flying. He quickly goes to the boy and again hits him on the face with his Aura Gauntlet. The boy flies a few miles and lands on the ground. Mord stands in front of the boy and says that he knows who he is. The boy is a high-level warrior named Baron. Hearing his name from Mord's mouth, the boy gets shocked and he asked Mord that how did he find out about him. Mord replies that he saw him once at the Grand Duke's training ground and he again saw him during the banquet. And when he noticed a short guy alone in a place where the Grand Duke's trusted troops had gathered, he asked around and from there he finds out about him. Mord then says that he is the Grand Duke's loyal dog, so he knew that he'll send him. And he also says the reason he is after him is because of the fruit. In the novel, Grand Duke Vernus is depicted as a strong but unforgivable villain. That's because he committed the heinous crime of devouring his own offspring. Hearing the word fruit form Mord's mouth, the boy gets shaky, and in a scared voice he asked Mord that how did he know about this?